Ben. And look, they can probably see me too. Oh. Surprise, Gus. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to Live at E3 by Rooster Teeth, presented by War for the Planet of the Apes. We totally were expecting you to to pop in right then. Yeah, no. Hello, everyone. Hello, Internet. It's I'm, funny meeting you here. We're very prepared. Gus, Mika, and Ryan. I'm far over here. And uh, we're here to and talk. A, up. the hole in our heart where Ashley will fill. Ashley will be there <laughs> at some point. We're, uh, we're ready to talk about the Ubisoft conference. We streamed yeah. all day yesterday covering... Uh, what did we cover yesterday? Microsoft, we covered and, Microsoft Beth and, and Bethesda. And the, the confusing mess that it was Bethesda. Bethesda. Yeah. Um, and now we're here to talk. I guess we're going to do a little bit of speculation about Ubi. And, mm -hmm. go, and then between conferences, play some games, and then talk about Sony. Apparently we missed a real humdinger of a uh, Devolver Digital yeah, conference, Yeah, apparently everybody too. Like, dropped acid and Devolver did a conference or something. It was like crazy and mm -hmm. mind-blowing. It was super like meta. And yeah. Like, the, the presenter starts yelling out buzzwords and bleeding from the nose. And yeah, the... Developers are sitting there just covered in blood as they hammer on a keyboard. What? It sounds more like performance art. Yeah, kind of. Anyway, that's so, not what we're here to talk about today. No, we're here to talk about Ubisoft. Have you seen the big Far Cry 5 banner they have outside of I, the yeah. I just Convention walked Center? by it. It's huge. Massive. I don't even know. Like, I looked at well, that. What's the Ubisoft thought, wall? What's that? It's a whole wall. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's thought, like, always Logistically, to... you can't just go to, like, a Kinko's, right, and be like, listen... <laughs> I want nice. a banner that's like 100 yards long and 20 yards tall. They have uh, printing shops in L.A. that do like step and repeats and stuff, so I'm sure that's maybe where they go to get that. Yeah, but how, do you, how is that ridiculously huge. possible? Do they plaster it to the How do they find of... a cardboard tube big enough to roll it up into <laughs> and, and transport it? That's a solid question. Yeah. <laughs> Asking the hard you go questions. to the same people that make those giant banners that they drag behind planes, right? Oh, uh, yeah, right. yeah, I guess so. I wonder if you could fly one of those. It probably got away a lot. You could literally crush someone to death with that banner. I wonder if you could turn it into a parachute, or is it too heavy? Ooh, I it's doubt probably it's, too heavy. Yeah, yeah, it's not very light, I wouldn't think. So you probably couldn't turn it into a cape and, like, run with it? Who gets to keep it when it's over? They cut it up and just <laughs> give out little swatches of it? Is it like a token gift if you worked on Far Cry? There you go. I like... got a father's eye. Yay, <laughs> I got part of a pitchfork. <laughs> so I think that's probably the game at Ubi that people are going to be most excited about. Are there, I mean, that and well, Assassin's Creed, Creed, obviously. It's like, Gus, don't well, do that to for, me. For me, if, 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 I've played some Assassin's Creed. I really liked Black Flag. Black Flag was so good. Uh, There's going to be naval battle again. So, yeah, I'm curious naval to see how that's incorporated in, well, in sort of. Origins. Naval battle. I mean, you're, I mean, kinda... you're on like a little sloop rather than a pirate ship. I'm sorry, but... a sloop? Sloop. Yeah. Is that a word? It's a little boat. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. I thought you ever right heard the Beach Boys oh, song, Sloop John B? You just got Snap Sloop. S L O O P. <laughs> I'm fact checking you. Yeah, do it. Sloop, a one masted sailboat with a Boom. fore, aft, and main stab and a jib. Okay, fine. A you sloop. just got jibbed. I got jibbed. jibbed all over you. <laughs> That's we have interesting. A, do we have a jib what? camera? Don't, we don't have a jib here. Uh, we don't have a jib. No, no. we don't. That would be cool, though. It probably doesn't have a jib on his little boat, either. I don't think it has like a jib camera, but it's, it does it, say no. it has a jib, whatever that is. You know, it's part of the mast. Sure. It's, it's, the, it's the giblets, right? That's yeah. It's, uh, now you're just naval bullshit. You got me. the biscuits and the giblets. Is ah, a, that's what you. Yeah, and that's then you get scurvy because you don't have any vitamin C in there. <sighs> are there are there any other titles you think that we'll see today at the Bethesda conference? Like anything? Oh yeah. That you're for planning sure. on? I mean, I'm. Uh, I'm well, uh, there. I bet we're gonna have a little bit of the same thing that all the others have done. It's like, hey, let's take a look at all the things that we've just released, and mm. we'll have some. Hopefully, they'll show bridge crew off a little bit just because i want people to go mm. buy it bridge crew is really fun yeah i can guarantee one title we know we're gonna see just dance 2k 18 <laughs> or is it 17 whatever year it's, we're on you know, you know there's gonna be a dancing giraffe again it's like cars you always get the next year you always right? get the next year yeah. um so yeah I, I, I think i'll stick with my earlier claim that the ones <laughs> i'm really looking forward to i guess are assassin's creed and far cry 5 i feel like when far cry 5 when the details first started leaking out there was a lot of Faux anger. Oh my God. Or, or, yeah. uh, Fanger, faux outrage. Like the, I, mean, the, I think I'm glad that that's died down. The leading comment gone. was like, okay, so the new enemy in Far Cry 5 is just normal Americans, which I think I feel uh, a little more concerned that the person thinks that, that that's, that's a normal, a normal American. American. Enemy, yeah, is a normal American. Ashley said that once. She's like, if you're getting personally offended by, you know, religious, cultist, zealot, crazy, murdering people, like, shh. Take a look at yourself, buddy, if you're yeah. like, how dare you? Well, like I, said, I think it was a lot of it was just faux outrage. Like yeah. People were wanting to be they angry or just mad. trying to uh, incite Drum up more some controversy. Yeah. Right. But I saw a lot of people being like, um, no, we kill everybody else all the time, always. Like, everybody gets their day, chill mm -hmm. out. I saw a lot more people being rational about it, which was strange. Maybe we're finally growing up? 
<laughs> it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, sure, right. Well, but it is going to be interesting because, I mean, there are not many of those games that take place on, uh, or, well, I mean, usually you two? go to really exotic locations and it rarely do those kind of games take place on U.S. soil. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's going to be a, a weird change to play here. Mm -hmm. I so, mean, you was get, it like, Modern Warfare worlds. 3? Did they have the New York, uh, the New York combat stuff? Or was it Modern Warfare 2? That was the one, there was a, a, that game, yeah, you had a stint in D DC where I, like all the helicopters were falling out of the sky and, mm -hmm. uh... So yeah, so... Well, I mean, also, are, like, in The Division, you're killing people in New York, like, that mm -hmm. are Just assholes. trying to survive? Just trying to survive. I mean, I, I don't know, I just find it funny when the distinction happens, but it's gonna be a good game. I can, I, mm -hmm. I see it. I wonder if there's gonna be the drug tripping mini games again. How could there not be? That's sure. been, I mean, in Far Cry 3 Far and 4, that was a huge mainstay is the, the kind of psychological world bending kind mm -hmm. of element to it. I wonder if there's gonna be skinning elements, like you skin a raccoon. Oh, I don't know. for sure. Like we don't have that much in America to skin. No, skin. we got lots of things What are you talking skin. about? Every, we have everything. Skinning? Snakes, you got, yeah. maybe you had, maybe there'll be a gator. I don't know. You, it you could be gators, could be bears, coyotes, wolves, coyotes, deer. excuse you. Coyotes, you coyotes, go. whichever. Maybe there's <laughs> one of each. Uh, what about like, I mean, I feel like. Maybe you maybe you attack a zoo and just kill everything in there. <laughs> You're like, damn it, I need more <laughs> ammo pouches. You just break into the zoo and start stabbing everything. Of course, the classic is beavers, right? I mean, there were like wars fought over there like beaver pelts but in like the 1700s. If it's modern America, do we have beavers just chilling? Yes. Yeah. Well, we okay, but it's not Oregon, beavers, it's Montana. Yeah. Are there beavers in Montana? Can I Google, I mean, are there beavers in Montana? There probably will be for the sake of this Google whatever you want. <gasps> are there beavers in Montana? We're all waiting to see. We're Beaver, Mon Montana Field Guide. There you go. There are beavers in Montana. I take it back. That is kind of an interesting point, though, because why would you skin animals? Well, I, I guess you could argue that in Far Cry 4, too. I mean, there were enough of them. They had helicopters and cars. Right, you didn't really you didn't, need to skin animals. Yeah, I didn't need to go kill three elephants to be able to carry my third gun. No. <laughs> uh, but I just hope that it's like you're literally skinning like the raccoon in the trash can. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like no exotic. I always hate those little ones. Hey, it's actually like the actually... the worst one from the from Far, Far Cry Four was the honey badger. Oh, oh they were yeah. vicious little fox. Vicious, tiny, and just could take a thousand arrows. <laughs> yep. I think E three has already slain me. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> it, it hasn't even started yet. I uh, I was down at the con I was just down at the convention center um, trying to get stuff sorted out. Yeah, I think I missed you by a couple of minutes. Uh, trying to get some stuff sorted out because we're getting our set ready like down at the convention center for everything tomorrow. <laughs> and I'm like running full, like I'm sprinting through the convention center. Someone says, are you the lady from the known? I was like, it's nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, just the same, shout out to that guy. So the conference starts in about 20 minutes and I'll remind everyone that we're going to be, you know, hosting the stream here, and we're going to also be giving our commentary and talking light about, commentary. you know, light commentary about uh, what's being announced, what's being shown. We'll try not to talk during the trailers and the big reveals, but you know, in between, we are going to give our two yeah. cents. But we'll we'll save the fights for later. Yes. Right. Yeah, because we'll, at the end of the show, we'll uh, we'll wrap up and uh, we'll continue wrap talking. Wrap our knuckles. Yeah. And, yeah that's yeah, when the combat it. starts. Also, yeah, we've got kind of like oh, there's like a window from when um, the Ubisoft press conference ends and the Sony press conference starts, so. Uh, we can, you know, we'll we'll talk about what we saw, what we liked, disliked about Ubisoft, and honestly, the show in general. I think um, we have more games that we can be playing. Mm -hmm. I saw I saw Gus's uh, Battlegrounds Battle Station. Yeah, I got it ready. It's right <laughs> on, on the, the table. Right so I was like, yeah, I, I get an idea what Gus wants to do. I'm uh, just saying. I mean, it's there. Just saying. Just saying. It people, it filled up immediately every time. It's I didn't even get in usually. I genuinely loved the gladiator aspect that we just took in at the end of just spectating and watching <laughs> everybody murder each other for our amusement. Yeah. Also to remind everybody if they want to interact with us, either they can talk in the chat or tweet with the hashtag RTE3 or tweet at one of us. And that's why we all have laptops except for Ryan. I got mine. It's in there. No, Ryan, you're not part of the crew. I've I've it's got one. Know. I think I might have missed like I might have like left one behind today. So I might be down to one laptop. Only uh -oh. one laptop? Come on, and Ashley. I'm, I know I'm throwing the ratio. <laughs> I'm glad we're back here again today because I realized after I got back to my room last night that I left my switch dock here. Oh. So yes. I got there. It is. I got to make sure to grab it when we take off today. Yes. Thank you for bringing that. Yeah. Yes. I'm all about bringing stuff to to be ready. We also have more Jackbox games that we can dip into. All right. For the so what are some of the other Jackbox ones that There's we can There's one that's really fun called Trivia Murder Party. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and it's pretty much it's like a test of knowledge with like a creepy, goofy, cartoony twist. 
Um, and there's, I don't have the party pack one or two. I just have three. So we don't have like fibbage, but I think we have drawful. Okay. And drawful's always fun. Yeah, I'm all, all I'm all about those kinds of games where we can interact with a large number of people who are you know who watching right, the stream right now. We had like thousands of people voting last night yeah. on our stuff, which was really fun. And I won one and I came in I think next to last place in the other one. Yeah, <laughs> which was not not great. Shout out to what was it, Pandemon? Pandemon. Pandemon, Pandemon. Pandemon oh, tweeted yeah. me at, yeah, uh, after the stream yeah. last night. Pandemon was awesome. Uh, well, I guess the other major game that we'll probably see is going to be South Park. Um, oh, yeah, the fractured point, the hole. Yeah, I mean, they, they pushed the release once already. Twice, um, haven't they? Is it twice? I think so. That wouldn't surprise me. Uh, but I do appreciate that those guys are... It, I always got the impression that they're more about getting that game right than getting it well, on time. I think yeah. they nailed it so well. They nailed the voice and the look with the first South Park game. I think that they want to make sure that they live up to that standard of quality. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, kudos to them. That's the game I'm looking forward to. But like you, it's like, take your time. When you're ready to ship it, I'm ready to play it. I can't believe they made a second one. I mean, uh, I can't believe they're calling it the fractured butthole. <laughs> I love that name. It's so good. That's amazing it, they got away with that. Was it Mika? Was it you? We were reading it together, and you hadn't realized what the, no, that like, was what the wordplay was. It was John okay? Yeah. Because yeah, he like didn't realize didn't it, and it so re basically read it through as. As the fractured butthole. Yeah, like there was there was a, like a very the cadence. Yeah, it, it, yeah. it wasn't playing in the cadence, and I was like, butthole. <laughs> he was saying like the fractured butthole instead of uh, the fractured butthole, and it's like it does sound like, very no, dramatic fractured. if you don't think about the fact that it's just making you say butthole. Butthole. <laughs> um, someone wants to know if we have any interest in the crew too. I'm interested. Man. Like these days, I'm <laughs> I'm I'm more interested in car games than I ever thought I was going to be. Because you loved Forza, right? I did. You were a Forza, a Forza gamer. I never played the crew. Is it? Wait, Boy, is Midnight and, Club kind of like people. the crew? Midnight Club LA. Yeah, that was a racing game. Um, on the 360. I mean, once upon a time. Once. I mean, if you want to say like arcadier, then yeah, like you know, it's there's driving and it's arcadey. So you know, in that respect. Okay. Is it mostly like you get on a track and you drive? It's not like open world. No, the crew. Well, the crew is um, like it's more street racing. Okay. Okay, so it is kind of like Midnight Club because yeah. that was street racingy more than like yeah. It's a bit, you know, you know, as I mean, opposed the crew to had the whole U.S. as sorta uh, in the game, right? It was a very constricted version of the U.S. Yeah. So you could drive from like New York to L.A., but it was like. But it wasn't. Yeah, it was like together. it was like it was like wow, that was a quick, a short commute. Yeah. <laughs> I could do this every day. Supercars, man! Wow, who needs a hyperloop? Um, although. Uh, uh, Wasp Movement says, don't compare Midnight Legend to the crew. Oh, sh sorry. So the crew, it's, I mean, if, if I had to compare sequel. it to any racing game, um, I probably, like, maybe more of a Forza Horizon, just because there's got more of the open world aspect. Okay. Um, and, like, the, the actually, like, on real roads, but it's more arcadey than Forza yeah. Horizon. Gotcha. So we're about... 15 minutes or so away from mm -hmm. uh, the start of the Ubisoft conference. So, so just want to remind everyone, we will be cutting to that yeah, and, and restreaming it in just a bit. And uh, I want to take a quick moment um, to say thanks to um, our sponsor for the show. Um, they're the ones presenting it. It's a War for the Planet of the Apes. It's going to be in theaters on July 14th. And we actually have a trailer to show you guys so you can see like what you'd be getting into when you go see the movie. I think it looks awesome. CG's got to like such a like an amazing point these days and I like Weta worked on it and they're cutting edge for all that like all of those effects it is brilliant take a look Dead now a long time. 
long time. Bad humans. It's soldier. Years from now, your children will ask you, what did you do in the greatest war? And you can tell them, I fought to protect this world. And the world for God and boy. We created them. But now, we will bring an end to their kind. Smart as hell. You're stronger than we are. But you're taking this all much too personally. So emotional! I did not start this war. Welcome back. Hey, so we're, we're just doing our own impressions of I will finish it. I will finish it. It's always good to be the finisher. Well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, as a, Jesus Christ. Yes, Ryan. Uh, as opposed to what, the finished? I mean, you don't want to be a starter without a finisher. <laughs> Unless you're like a pitcher in baseball, right? You can be like a starter. I mean, you still finish the game. Not necessarily. Got a relief coming in to finish the uh, game. Do, do, oh, do you want to be the pitcher or the catcher? <laughs> hey. hey. <laughs> I see what you did there. Oh, so is okay. there anything, we were talking about this a little bit before you got here, Ashley. Is there anything you're expecting or anything you're excited for coming up in this UB conference? Uh, I'm definitely curious to see more of Far Cry 5. Um, I want to know if they're going to drop another new IP on us. Ubisoft has been pretty good. They did, the uh, last couple years, was it like Steep they, last year? Or they was did Steep, Steep was which, a surprise. you know, uh, thank you to them for working on a new IP. <laughs> Not my kind of game. Um, I honestly couldn't tell you how it's been performing. It hasn't been on my radar at all. But I like that Ubisoft does do new IPs more than a lot of uh, other publisher developers. So I'm hoping that we see more of that. Uh, I already know um, they said that uh, Beyond Good and Evil is skipping. So we're not going to see Beyond Good and Evil 2. Mm -hmm. I f which I'm pretty sure doesn't it doesn't exist. Um, Michelle, so I'm... Come on. Uh... <laughs> So I don't think we'll see that. Uh, let's see what Far Cry. What about Mario I, Rabbids? Well, yeah. I wonder if we'll see Mario Rabbids today at the Ubisoft conference or if they'll Ninten save it for the Switch. Nintendo. For, yeah. like, Nintendo's, um, Nintendo Spotlight. Maybe we'll get, so, like, a brief clip of we'll it or see. something. Um, I think... I would like to see more Ubi art games, but that's not the direction that Ubisoft is going. I think mm. they're going in the fewer, you know, uh, huge... Uh, like huge IP multiplayer uh, post-release transaction model titles from now on. But I would Them give everyone else. my soul for a Child of Light sequel. Yeah, Child of Light was Child a Light fantastic is, game. I cry without fail playing it every time and listening to the soundtrack. Like, a lot of their uh, of their UB art games. There was the other one too, Valiant Hearts. That was where, also yeah. good. That yeah. one when that uh, when Didn't that trailer hit at E3. No. That just huh. just the trailer was tears. There's like this the thing of like the little doll curling up on the grave. Ah, oh. oh. it was. You, there's just something about they they know how to tell a story, and they know what to do with art style and like the music directions. It kind of reminds me of like Ori and the Blind Forest. It's just like mm -hmm. the music with the characters with the story. You just care so much, and it's like Child of Light took me a few hours to complete. Like I did it in one sitting, but by the end of it, I was like a mess. And I know that Yubi's not gonna do some more stuff like that, but. Dang flabbit, I wish they would. Yeah. Do you, do you think Vivendi's going to show up and try to take over the conference? <laughs> <laughs> There's a, they're actually just going to set up on stage. They're going to have, like, a side stage. That's, they're going to take 40% uh, exactly. of the stage. <laughs> yeah, what, what is it they have now for Ubisoft? Is it 26 27%, something like that? I, I don't know. Not enough that they have to make the bid for the takeover, but they're, they're edging. Uh-huh, they're edging. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're keeping them right there. Oh, my God. They don't want to like finish. Like, right there, right really? there on the edge, but they don't want to finish it. 
Let us know finishers. So uh, a few people, I'm, I'm looking through YouTube chat here, and a few people are saying, what about the possibility of a new Splinter Cell game? I feel like it's been... Oh, it's been a minute since we've had some Splinter Cell. Splinter Cell is one of the games that... Um, I mean, there wasn't exactly a pro circuit for Splinter Cell, but uh, I that was the one that I participated in tournaments uh, tournaments on, and I loved that game. I, I was, me me was, and my Splinter Cell partner, Teresa. Uh, we had good times. Spies versus Mercs was one of my favorite early like, Xbox Live. Yeah, multiplayer, multiplayer titles, absolutely fantastic. And it was just, like... The balance was spectacular. Mm -hmm. Like being being the the spy was so hard, but it was meant to be. But if you were really good at it, you could fuck up those marks. <laughs> so it looks like I mean uh, the last game that came out was Blacklist in 2013. Yeah, and before they that rebooted it. Yeah, that before that was Conviction in 2010. Yeah, I feel like they they kind of. So I play Splinter Cell primarily multiplayer. I do play the campaign and then switch over to multiplayer, and so that's what tends to take a lot of my focus. And I felt that multiplayer-wise, they kind of lost their focus with Conviction. Um, you know, uh, or no, they lost it with Double Agent, and then Conviction was just sort of weird as well. Um, but they, you know, they they did sort of reboot the franchise. It was a very different feel, a very different approach, and it was you know. Hashtag not my splinter cell. <laughs> um, so I'm curious to see if they come back with it, what it is they're going to do, because they have let it rest for a couple of years. It was really strange that they decided to replace the voice actor, but not the character. Yeah. Why well, Sam Fisher returned I, as a different I think they had voice? some creative differences with the voice actor. With Michael Ironsides? Yeah. Uh, but still, I mean, and, and he was getting up there, and you could start to tell in his voice that he, he sounded like old. Probably a guy he that was like older old. than you would... Well, expect to be crawling around snapping necks. Well, even was, the character of Sam well, Fisher they addressed in his that last in the game, game was yeah. very old. Yeah, in Conviction and Blacklist, they definitely made that like I'm getting too old part of the story. Show. Yeah, mm -hmm. like he was he was aging. But why not just have another character in that universe? Come up with you know a new people are attached to their characters. They are, but they didn't really continue his story. They went a really different direction with Blacklist. So I'm being told here we have um, Eddie. Uh, yeah. Doing, you know, Ed from the know who's doing some fact checking and looking up information for us. He Good says, old Ed. Thanks, Eddie. There was an iffy rumor back in August that Ironside was back in the studio recording for a Splinter Cell game. Ooh. I mean, I, I, know, that's if, not good I like it. I like it. If so, I think Ironside did a wonderful job as that character, and I do like to see uh, talent sticking with the characters rather than recasting. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's, there's just something that's really, you know, you can do an imitation, but it's, it doesn't, it. It, you don't get the full effect. Yeah, I mean, Which people, he didn't. The, the replacement voice actor was not even attempting to be Michael Ironside. He just did his own thing. And people were, of course, up in arms with uh, Metal Gear, The Phantom Pain, mm -hmm. when uh, Kiefer Sutherland replaced David Hayter. Oh, they but explained it? Thematically, yeah. Thematically, it ended up making sense. They but, just couldn't tell you why. <laughs> right. It, you could not, it could not be explained. Uh, I mean, I would be okay with Michael Ironside's returning if he returned as Sam Fisher, who is now like older and maybe running third echelon or something, and give us a new character. Do you, do you think they need to do that? They need to like bring in the new generation? As long as 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 long as they don't uh, like Indiana Jones it and be like, here's right. Shia LaBeouf oh. and also aliens. Yeah, don't right. don't tease me with something like that. No, it's the character. He's had a real rough life. Oh. <laughs> So Wasp Movement said Prince of Prussia, but I would also just take another Prince of just, I would love a Prince of Prussia reboot. No, I want Prince of Prussia. Prince I will of take, Prussia? I will, you know, I will take a Prince of Prussia. I would take an entire... That sounds like a Battlefield what if 1 we, expansion. What if we end up with the, uh, with the, the Prince game matic universe? There you go. In sure. which princes from all kinds of countries and regions... Uh, I thought, you, oh. meant like, I thought you meant like the, the artist formerly known as Prince. Like, <laughs> also know. that. Yeah. There's a Prince Prince He's, DLC, yeah. and everything is purple. He he reigns over the afterlife. Reigns? Purple reigns? <laughs> I'm sorry. That's, you know, he's dead now, so he, that's okay. You can make those jokes. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I don't think that that automatically makes that perfect. Some of the, the licenses are all up for grabs. <laughs> the Prince licenses? You know, he no longer has, has artistic control over his Prince empire. The the thing is, I really loved... So I, the Sands of Time fran like, franchise was friggin' fantastic. I loved it. Then they... they, re they well, it got weird. It, mm -hmm. got, it got a little bit weird. Then they decided that he's like a rocker. And then they decided that he's and just like really Jake conflicted Gyllenhaal. and dark. And we got the movie. Oh, yeah, yeah. Then they rebooted the they removed they rebooted the game and it was really different. It was I think their first like their move into more of that like stylized artistic 
sort of approach. And I quite liked it, but most people most people didn't like the changes that mm -hmm. had come to it. So we've got about four minutes. Oh, okay. Everyone Exciting. a heads up. That was the soon. Everybody we'll drinks, very soon. snacks. Now's yep. the time. Yep. You make your last minute. Your last minute uh, speculation is uh, this is the time for it. So you can say, I told you so, when they finally announce it. Or like a wild, any wild speculation. I hope we get to name the hawk in Assassin's Creed. That's my speculation. No, you won't get to do it. No. <gasps> Don't crush my dream. No, crush, 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 crush. Hawk skin <laughs> DLC. <laughs> I go. want a hawk DLC. Yeah. I want to be able to oh, can put we get skins hawk on armor? him. I want to get hawk armor. No. I want to be able to give him accessories. Oh, no. I want to give him a monocle those, and a mustache. Those little hoods like you put on Falcon. Yeah. 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 And then, like, you can draw like a smiley face on it. That's what yeah. I want. I want hawk DLC for Assassin's Creed. That's <laughs> it's going to be like 400 creator credits. Now, those. Oh. Are, that's oh. not a paid mod. It's not a paid mod. No. However, you do have to go fillet someone at Ubisoft if you want those credits. It, so take that how you will. You know what? For a hawk hood, yeah. What are you gonna name your hawk? Name hawk? Bernie, I'm gonna name him Xerxes. Xerxes. <laughs> I wanna you want to come Xerxes. sit in? Yeah. Uh, no, I can come sit. I'll come sit in when the press conference starts. How about that? Okay. I got about three minutes. Fine. I feel awkward in the middle. Bernie, what would you name your hawk? What? What would you name your hawk? Fly Joe's. Oh my Fly god. Jones. Joe the Hawk. Did you know she was going to say Xerxes? You seemed very uh, excited about that. Oh, I, I've always known that if I ever got a hawk or a falcon and became a falconer, I'd name him Xerxes. Why do you always know that? That was the first time that I ever thought about what I would name a hawk. <laughs> That's, uh, that was actually a rejected uh, name for the Jones baby. Fly well, Jones. Uh, why did you already know for all of your life that you... If we were to ever get a hawk, it would be Xerxes. Ryan, are these not the kind of things... Yeah, come on, I was no, going to say, you've known me... Well, you know me well enough to know that I, I have weird preparations. One of them is if I ever get a hawk and or a falcon, his name will be Xerxes. That's getting real granular with potential futures. I'm just saying. Which door of your house will you leave if there's a fire? Back door. It depend, no, wrong. It depends where the fire is. What if the fire's in the back door? You just walk you through a fire. <laughs> so you, that was a trick question. You have plotted out what the name of your hawk is, but yeah. don't know which room or building well, to leave, door to leave the building Ryan. in. Priorities, yeah. Priorities, exactly. There's, like, there's way more of a chance that I will get a falcon and or a hawk than a fire will set fire. I would house. say that that's not necessarily true. Are you going to set fire to my house? Are you going to go get a hawk and or falcon? Well, maybe I will, Ryan Haywood. Maybe I will. Well, stick to digital ones because they they require a lot of care in real life. You're right, and mice freak me out, so there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you two fighting? Are, we gonna, are this going to be an awkward <laughs> Ubisoft stream? <laughs> Let's hope not. Not after Bethesda. Don't hurt me again. Oh. I just want something new. I want to. I want to see something. That's what I always go to a press conference hoping for, or watch a press conference hoping for. Is show me something that I haven't already heard about in a mm -hmm. leak that I'm not expecting. Blindside me. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, it's Ubisoft, so. We have about, we'll see about that. one minute. So it's coming up here pretty soon. Yes. 60 seconds. And we'll, and we'll, we'll pull it up big here um, on, the com uh, on the screen when it starts so everyone can see it. And we can, uh, we'll do full screen on uh, all the trailers so you get like the full effect of those. Pretty stoked. Uh, I want to see, what do I want to see? Besides Prince of Persia. Splinter Cell. Ever since I was chat Splinter, Splinter Cell, Cell, that's what I want now. I, I will not be happy unless I, I get Splinter, Splinter Cell. <laughs> What else? I mean, if I want to like shoot for the sky, oh, those are both those are both pretty. High. I mean, I like I would like Beyond Good and Evil, but I already know that's a no. Maybe they were Unless. just baiting and switching us, yeah. and they're like it's not going to be there. But then surprise, bam, yeah. Beyond Good and Evil too. So all right, we're gonna get. Um, let's see, we get uh, we get Crew Two, we get Far Cry, Mario Rabbids. Mm. Oh, here we go. All right, this isn't starting. Let's yeah. get popcorn. Yeah. Did they I not think, get popcorn? This well, year? I think we thought that uh, Rabbits is going to push to the Nintendo conference. Yeah, I think that if we don't see it here, we'll definitely see it at the Nintendo conference. And uh, popcorn wasn't that at Bethesda? No, popcorn's always at Ubisoft. Was it? Oh, okay. Yeah. Eve Demo, everyone, please. Eve Demo. Here we go. Eve. Uh, Eve. I like Eve. He always I seems so happy. Is yours. Would you do the his, honors, his mic game is much stronger than Bethesda's, too. Let the games begin. Oh, he's so fresh. <laughs>
Turn the Bethesda one, I can hear you guys mumbling. You're a mumbler. Blah, 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 blah. Well, the other... Starting off with rabbits. All right, so we're gonna see Mario rabbits. <laughs> now waiting for uh, the, the Nintendo Spotlight. Are these from the pickles? <laughs> 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 Is there anything that's more minions without actually being a minion? No. <laughs> rabbits. Rabbits predate the minions. Okay. They do like minions with yes. based off of rabbits. Hello, everyone. And thank you. We've always wondered what could happen if our crazy rabbits were unleashed upon the world of Mario. Why? Today, what would you name why, why would you want to be a reality. Oh, what a cute family photo. And to talk about this unexpected encounter, it is my great honor to welcome a very special guest. Oh boy. Someone I truly oh my God. admire. Miyamoto? Is it Miyamoto? Mario. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh. He's got a gun. He's got a gun. <laughs> I'm waiting for him to get security. tackled by security now. Not a lot of people in the games industry get standing ovations. Miyamoto is one that does. Why does he have a bullet build Mega Buster? Why, I don't, know, why I, don't we all I have one? one. Yeah. Yeah. Please tell me it's confetti game. Is there anyone who is more uh, generally like Thank you for coming. Uh, yeah. Miyamoto? Happy to have you today. Yeah. Me? Yeah, you guys. So what What have you brought oh. with you? Well, what did you bring? <laughs> this is a <laughs> right side replica. Uh, uh -huh. One of the weapons from this game. Wow. Cool. I'm sure you love it. <laughs> I brought one for you. Okay. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> wow. Woo. So. <laughs> so it's. Oh, little thing. This is the most precious oh, thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> 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 He's having a good time. I love it. I love me. Oh, no. Yeah. Have our conversation. Okay. These are a little bit different from the weapons you see in Ghost Recon. <laughs> yeah, very different weapons for cute. very different worlds. Uh, <laughs> this one is, I think, very effective in the, the world of Mario and Rabbit. So, should do well. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm so proud of Ubisoft's long-standing collaboration with Nintendo. You know, from the DS to the Wii, and uh, more recently for the impressive launch of the Switch, you know, it has always been, we have always been inspired by Nintendo and by all the great work you have been able to do. Yes, thank you very much for all the work that we've been able to do together over the years with Ubisoft. I mean, Eves, it's already been about 25 years since you and I first met. And every year at E3, you're kind enough to invite me to your booth, and we get to take lots of pictures and videos, and I've even recorded messages for Ubisoft employees in the past. I want his shirt so bad. <laughs> oh, you can get that. So over the years, I've always yeah, felt Uniqlo the deep, collection. heartfelt passion that Ubisoft developers have <laughs> for Who Nintendo and its characters. Who are you wearing, Uniqlo? I was a rival of Ubisoft. But on the other hand, uh, because we're both software developers, we've also looked at each other as kind of yeah. rivals and, and sure. tried to see who could make the best software. <laughs> I feel like they should have shown the game by now. No, no, no. no. Let these two cute old men uh, But of course, I've known the Rabbids characters for many years, and I have many Rabbids figures uh, decorating my desk. Wow. Um, oh, so I've always okay. been a fan of the characters and their humor. 
だから今回の話があった時にダビッツがどんなユーモアをこうゲームの中で見せるかすごい楽しみにしてます。Uh, so since this project first started, I've been very excited to see what kind of humor the rabbits could bring to the Mario world. <笑>でただだあのダビッツさんに会った時にね、うん、ダビッツさんに一つだけお願いします。So when I met、uh, Davide San, who is the、uh, creative director of this game. <笑> Yes. Uh, when, I, when I met Davide さん、ゲームは何でも見つけた。よかったですね。<laughs> <laughs> and it's great. And I can tell you, it was an exciting, very、uh, exciting challenge for all our teams. And I think we've done something you will love. So, thank you very much for giving us the chance to, to perform on this game. はい、本当にあのこうヨーロッパで作るとこんなものができるのかとかね。それからえっと UBI さんやっぱりアクションゲームをちゃんと作ってる会社なんで。ストラテ単性のストラテジーゲームというもののちゃんとこうテンポのいいゲームが出来上がりました。And so of course because the, the game is being made in Europe, it has a very unique flavor to it.、Um, and of course Ubisoft is very good at making action games,、uh, but this game in particular has a great layer of strategy and tactics to it,、uh, but with a very good pace. Yeah, no, it's, it's going to be fresh, actually.、Uh, so now let's welcome Xavier, you know, the, the producer of the game. And he will show us the game. So thanks again.、Woo. Thanks again, Miyamoto. Strong start.、Yeah. That's a strong start bringing、cool、Miyamoto、money. on stage.、Yeah. And we've got we see the game, six minutes to game, like six minutes in, and it's game time. So, best start so far. Finally, t shirt blazer. Finally, we、Fun、can talk、dunk. about this project. <laughs> I thought about finally we got the guy off stage. I've <laughs> <laughs> been working on this game for more than three years now, and、uh, to be at E3 today on this stage is just、uh, super exciting. So, what is this game exactly? So, Mario Plus Rabbit's Kingdom Battle is a tactical adventure exclusive for the Nintendo Switch, and let's check right away some gameplay. Right away. Right yeah, away. Right in. Nice. That looks great.、Yeah. So the rabbits have been teleported into the,、uh, the Mushroom Kingdom, and it made the world completely unstable and chaotic. So Mario, as a true hero, wants to save the day. But this time, with some new friends. I'm loving how the rabbit's peach is running. <laughs> <laughs> And at first, they don't really know each other, but in the end, they will form this、uh, dream team that will potentially save the、yeah. Mushroom Kingdom. I was kind of skeptical, but this looks really cute. I'm, I'm sold. I was skeptical as well. I've never been a huge fan of the Rabbit franchise, but this looks real. Here's w e a r e to see what you do, yeah. You run around, you follow a r o o m Well, gotta be a... No, 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 that's the game. Okay. That's the game, you found it. It also, I don't know if it's just this clip, but it looks oddly desaturated. It's just And like as the game is a turn based tactical adventure game,、uh, combat is a really big part of the concept.、Like um, so to you'll find a way that the wave of rabbits that somehow t u r n bad. And、uh, what we see here is just、uh, the very beginning of the game, so it will be perfect to talk about the combat、okay. basics.、Uh, so the two flags you see on the screen here is to tell you this is a battlefield zone. So you'll switch from exploration mode to battle mode. The blue zone is your zone of movement, so you move anywhere you want in that zone. But、like、you can also、calm. use battlefield ingredients <laughs>、oh、my God. in the covers for protection. <gasps> oh, so it's more your way to go. And、uh, we also have what we call team jump. So by jumping on your teammates, you can expand. <laughs> oh my God. It's Mario x c o m So here, Rabbit Peach,、oh. using Mario, she's able to flank the enemy. 
So you can also attack the enemy behind that cover and expose them by destroying that cover, um, which is really interesting in terms of strategy because uh, for next turns, it will be open for uh, attacks. And last but not least, techniques. So from defensive ones like uh, Rabbit Peach Shield Boost or offensive ones like Mario's Hero Sight, he's able to attack the enemy even if it's not his turn as soon as the enemy moves. That's Overwatch. In, uh, next time. So this is the very core aspect of the game itself. So you mix and match attack options, movement abilities, techniques. But we also have um, other ingredients, such as uh, pipes, rabbit pipes. So those give you uh, a good move to uh, flank the enemy. So here, for example, Rabbit Luigi goes into the pipe, out of the pipe, dash the enemy, goes for Mario, team jump, land behind the enemy in one single movement sequence, wow. and then finish off the enemy. Yo, yeah, Luigi, you're getting some credit. And what we see uh, here is actually uh, explosive well, cover. So those have many <laughs> type of uh, super effects. And this one was a push effect. So you can push heroes or enemies out of the uh, boundaries. So again, this is just a glimpse into the basics of the game. And as you progress into the game, uh, you have more tactic tools. You'll be able to do more combo setups. You'll be able to use different type of heroes, different type of weapons. I love Rabbit Peach. In order to battle your way through uh, the kingdom. Oh my god. Did he just pull a bullet bill rocket out of his hat? He did. He I did love do that. him. The skill trees? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. It is an RPG. Interesting game. I was not at all was, interested in that game until I was then. not Same. expecting that. No. I, I wasn't expecting to like it. I now like it I and want, want yeah. it. I didn't give a fuck about this game. Yeah. Now yeah. I, I want it. I need I it. I don't understand and the open world part of it. Just, uh, like yeah. the, that Mario-esque like open-ish world. But, uh, all Mario's have hub worlds, first, I guess. Yeah. So you just, I feel like it would be weird if it didn't. You're Russian. walking from battle to battle. Hold on, what's up? They got some figurines. Store.ub.com? I can't wait for you guys to try the game at E3 this week. For those who are not at E3, You'll see online coverage, videos, and surprises. So have a great conference. Have a great E3. Thank you. End conference. Yeah, that was a solid, solid start. Release August 29th. <laughs> August 29th on what? Switch. 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 <laughs> Mario is the only playable Nintendo character? Nope, there's, oh, there's Yoshi. Yoshi right there. And Peach was there in briefly in that other thing. But... And there's Peach. She always looks confused. Huh? Dan would like her. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's a piranha plant, rabbit. What is happening? Oh, Toad. Toad. Um, that's it. Pre-ordering. I am so ready. Understandably, I don't understand entirely the music choice here. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that sold me. Oh, man. That's it. 
<laughs> this is now the best thing I've seen all E3. Yep. Yeah, that was Ubisoft great. Ubisoft starting I strong. I did not expect that. Is it time? Is it assassin time? The stage with gold. Yep. <gasps> I think this is what you've been waiting for. This is what you've been waiting for. Yep. It's gonna paint an eye of Horus on my face, but then Nameable I thought that made too much. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ashraf Ismail, game director for Assassin's Creed Origins. This is the guy that worked on Black I've waited Black. a long time yep. to say that. <laughs> Which means you know it's gonna be good. <laughs> Almost 10 years ago, I, as many of you, fell in love with a game. That game took us to the Third Crusade. And we fell in love again when it took us to the Italian Renaissance. Over the years, this amazing series has taken us to the American Revolution, the French Revolution, Victorian London, and of course, to the Republic of Pirates. For the 10-year anniversary of Assassin's Creed, Anybody? for our fans, that? for ourselves, no idea. and for all newcomers, it was a real -time thing. we wanted to go back, Is that very how far back, to show uh, how it all began. I don't know. Since Black Flag, over the last three and a half years, we have poured our energy, our talent, our passion into bringing the land of pyramids, pharaohs, and mummies to life, to bring ancient Egypt to life. Now, Egypt challenged us. It fundamentally challenged us to reinvent what it means to be Assassin's Creed. And over the next few days, you will see, play, and feel this reinvented experience. I am deeply honored and proud to be here representing the amazing work of a phenomenal team and thrilled to finally be able to show you this beast we have been building. Without further ado, here is a taste of Egypt. This is really pretty, and I still have no idea what you like, what like what it's about. Thank it's you. What you're doing. What you're right, doing. like what you're doing. I'm gonna, I know you're assassin. You. <laughs> uh, as an extra treat, let's check in with home base, where we're gonna get a glimpse of what you'll see right after the UB conference. Hey there, folks. Chris Waters here at the home base with Hanny nice Duong and Carl Lua, producer on Assassin's Creed like Origins at weapons. Ubisoft Singapore. Uh, Carl's here to give Rabbids us a look a at the leader. gameplay of the game. We're going to be entering combat. the open world. We've got a ton more to show you, but Carl, kick it off. Give us a little taste here. Yeah, so here we are in the open world of, of Egypt. This is the demo that we will be showing on the, the show floor here at E3. Bayek is riding into the Fayum, one of the, the regions in Egypt, this most southernmost region. It's a, a beautiful area. We see we've come in from the desert, yeah. yes, exactly. moving towards this uh, Lake Morris. And uh, let's have a little exploration around here using our eagle. Scene. Oh, come on. 
Don't just show it's us. sunny on the lake and it's sunny on the PC monitor here, the but folks, this looks really good. It's running on an Xbox One X. <laughs> yeah, We've given you the, the gameplay game speed after game. the show. We've got 30 Mike minutes Assassin's of Creed. that coming up, but uh, let's see if we can see from a bird's eye view what Sanu is up to. What? How about yeah, so instead of the bird's eye view, we see the in monitor tagging view. Tagging a few enemies here. After, after the show, we will infiltrate this camp and take it out either through stealth or combat or perhaps well, rage. I hope they get a direct feed for right, after the show. If you guys want to see more of this, be sure to tune in right after the conference. Are you holding it Chris hostage? Chris and I and Carl here will be right here. What? Is that what that was? Well, you won't want to miss they it. They say they were just giving you old 30 minutes live gameplay feed you is know, coming the up after the show, free. but for now, what? it's back to the stage what? and on with the excitement. Why set up that whole set just to That's it for show now. the game poorly? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You know, make may you so, want may you want to go visit now, right? You, you want to be like, demo in its entirety why'd after you do the that? Conference, uh, live stream from our home base. And for those of you here at E3, please come to the Ubisoft booth, where Everybody you can live of. this new experience of Assassin's Creed. Thank you very much. On every platform. I got a good feeling about this iteration of the Assassin's Creed franchise. Well, it's I think I'm hoping, and it looks like the time off was good for them. They collected themselves and came back strong. Far Cry 5 or take a little break with something else. Although I've had Maybe we can go watch with... someone play something else on a monitor for yeah. a little while longer. Huh. Huh. Haynes. Um, well, there's Ubisoft in the game. Cars. Crew. Crew. Uh oh. Here's your chance. Biggest world ever. You think they're gonna say that? <laughs> oh. Inception, most folded over world ever. Yes, Taurus world. Get our new hotshot driver with a promising career dominate off road racing on his way to the top. <laughs> Every year, I think that driving games can't get any more photorealistic, and I'm always wrong. You see that, but Gus is so tired of seeing racing games. I, I, I'm tired of seeing them too, because I think I do think like watching this. All right, we're seeing another racing game that's photorealistic. I've seen this before, but I have to acknowledge it's what they've done is amazing. Yeah, they always. Do. I guess you can fly now. <laughs> that doesn't seem fair. <laughs> <laughs> The cars are hauling up. Our champion swords around it brilliantly. Now that's the skill that wins no matter what the engine, no matter what the track. That, you think I'm a drag race? Impromptu? And boom. This is an undisputed motorsports champion coming out of nowhere to rise to the top. As someone who's not familiar with this franchise at all, I don't really understand what I just saw, honestly. The trailer looks fantastic. I think it's it's open world, it's racing, but it's... With cars, cops and planes. planes and boats yeah. and, like, and on racetracks. Yeah, he's, I really don't, don't know what kind of... professional racer building is racing. Driving race everywhere. Out but there. apparently in every be video. Why? And also like out in public being chased by cops too. Well, sure. It's he's got a, a bad guy. to our players. We have taken this iconic vision to the next level. Oh, you are so French. They showed us what they liked and what they wanted to see in the futures. Now, it's time to take it way beyond driving. I am Stéphane Bellet, creative director. This is The Crew 2. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.
Here in the US, motorsports are louder, bigger, agier than anywhere else in the world. Drivers and fans meet across the country and celebrate a common passion for all things motorized. Now's your chance to join in. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the crew two, home of Mother Nation. In the heart of the city, street racers prove their skills, skidding on rooftops, burning asphalt, and tuning their rides. So help me God if they debut a new Porsche. <laughs> Forge your own path off-road through the striking beauty of nature. There's a lot of nature. Tame unpredictable waves on the open ocean, rapid waters, or narrow rivers. But can you take a fan boat to the bayou? That is my question. Continuing to boat. Do you think you're gonna fly now? Oh, you called it. Fearless pilot rules the skies, spin between buildings, through the clouds, among stunning, stunning perspectives. It's gorgeous. I know, but I keep just coming back to you. Okay, but why? <laughs> it's like, why are you going between all these vehicles? You're just. You just pick one and race? Is that I what I think this you're is? an extreme sports guy. Yeah, it seems it's... like you're you're like a rising extreme sports star. Yeah. So you're like the ultimate like motorsports guy. The king guy. of like all motorsports. Right. I get it. Boat, but it's like, it's like, is there a story behind it? Like there's a narrative. Like, Building your career, man. You just, or you just you just load up a race and go. Oh no, I'm sure there. I'm sure there's like a career component to it. This is just showing us the action part. Because like it'll it'll tie a bunch of stuff together with the story, but what people actually play the game for is the gameplay. I, don't, I mean, I'm kind of with Bernie, though. I don't feel like they've shown us the gameplay. They've just shown us a bunch of vehicles, and, like, cruising around. Pretty shocked. There's yeah. no, like, waypoints. There was no, like... No identity in the yeah. game. There's no identity. Okay. No indication of what was happening right. in one of those shots. All across the country, I octane contests await you. Take the lead on modern nation. You've had a glimpse of the crew too. Register now for beta access or play the demo at the booth. Experience TC2 for yourself. Enjoy the ride, thank you. I'm, I'm really shocked they didn't say anything about the size of the world. Because that was kind of one of the big things with the crew, is how mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
large the area was. Look like they were implying it by folding the world in on itself. Uh -huh. Well, that was kind of, yeah, they mushed everything real close together in the crew. Yeah. Yes. We all started as one team. We all wanted to be superheroes for the same reason. You're a traitor, Tweak, and now you're with a group of super traitors. This was started by you. We aren't the ones who walked out of the fucking franchise, Mysterion. Why would the Freedom Pals help us? We send a spy, someone in our group who pretends to want to switch sides and join Freedom Pals. Somebody who they don't know very well. All this fair and love and war, Freedom Pussies. You fucking animal. You've got problems, new kid. Whatever you did last night got a lot of people's attention. Bad people. If you need information, just know you can rely on... Call Girl. Who does the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> so I guess now any fucking asshole thinks they can be a superhero. We're gonna rip you apart. Dude, Mysterion is pissed at you, new kid. Toolshed. Toolshed is a catchy tier class visionary archetype. And a butt fucking traitor. <laughs> Eric, you must listen to me. Get out of my head, Timmy. Your franchise is going nowhere. Face the truth, Eric. You guys are kind of douchebags. He just called us douchebags in my mind. He did? <laughs> the fractured butthole. <laughs> Available October 17th. I loved the first one. This one looks great. Yeah. Yeah. It looks great. Amazing. I don't really want to play a demo. I want to just have the game. Well, October. There you go. Yeah. Everything's coming in October. It's getting glitchy. Watch Dogs 3 confirmed. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Wait, I was joking. Please tell me this, mm. is, this is Watch Dogs 3. Oh, God. There was this sort of synergy of, well, we're looking to do something interesting in VR, and we've got this division, and you're looking to sort of bring, you know, what sense you have of storytelling within, and put that into the context of VR. You can, for the first time as a player, feel like you are in a movie. That's a really good word for it. We want you to take off the gear and still feel unsettled. With Army Man 2. <laughs> Whilst working with Ubisoft, we stumbled across some fascinating research that had begun in the late 90s. Essentially, neuroscientists had figured out a way to upload brain data, trauma, emo emo emotions, memories, to the digital space. Now, we've gone and taken the next logical step, and with Ubisoft, we've, we've recreated in virtual reality one such test of time. So we'd like you to come and join us and experience the Walter test case for yourself. Dharma and the Mumbai. Yeah, this is freaking me out. A little Matrix in there, too. What you're experiencing is a recorded consciousness. It's not like watching a movie, so no matter how real it may seem, it can't hurt you. You were completely safe. You were completely safe. For the other. All right. Seems like it. Okay. VR is so hard to show in a yeah. non VR environment. Yeah. Yeah. So they're just showing the concept yeah. of it. It's, it's psychonauts. Like, and it, like, the experience. I just think of Transference, though, and I think of Kojima. Mm. Ooh, water. And now, I'm happy to share a new surprise with you. Ooh. Ooh. Building on the legacy of one of our most popular worlds, the super talented teams of Ubisoft Singapore came up with something really really unique. So I want you to see that and enjoy it. Thank you.
men from all over the world sail the treacherous trade routes of the Indian Ocean. The riches in their holds fuel their dreams of power and fortune, while whetting the appetites of those they fear most. Pirates. Just spinning off that black flag, huh? Yeah. I'm on board. I'm so on board. Because everybody loved being a pirate. What? Shoot the Jews at once. Shoot them at once. I want to know what's the multi, like what's the extent of multiplayer and I so on. But I, I want to know what, 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 what it is. Pirate, right, thank Mika. you, Bernie. Uh, thank Bob you, that game. Pirates. Yeah. It's a cinematic trailer telling you nothing. Especially 120 days. That's how long the average pirate survived a lawless life on the seas during the golden age of piracy. That's not long. Mm -mm. I'm Justin Fair, and the creative director for Skull and Bones, and this is your you chance to not babies. just survive but to climb the food chain and surpass the legend of every pirate who ever sailed the high seas. Since bringing innovative naval combat to Assassin's Creed, we at Ubisoft Singapore have set out to bring you the ultimate pirate experience. A tactical action game where we take that naval combat to the next level, mastering the ocean and its winds at the helm of ships armed to the teeth. Skull and Bones takes place in a shared systemic world where you can sail solo or form a gang of pirates with your friends and together so terrorize the trade routes of the Indian Ocean. Season after season, you'll collaborate and compete with other bloodthirsty players. Season. Even execute ruthless betrayals in order to become reset. the Is ultimate pirate kingpin. Systemic world. Now I'm proud to share with you the loot hunt. One of Skull and Bones' five versus five team-based PvP modes. Cool. Right on, right? We've just received intel that merchant convoys rich with treasure are sailing just off the coast of Madagascar. But beware, there are other pirates also looking to plunder the PvP-disputed waters of the Indian Ocean. Are they going to see a thieves before sea of thieves? That's the that's yeah. the big question, right? No, yeah. this is definitely this is not the shallows this is shallows of Madagascar. Pre -alpha. Not not this year. Located on the cusp of a yeah, bustling trade route. Yeah, based on the Assassin's Creed IV. the perfect yeah, place that's... for an ambush. It was done so well. Here is our gang of pirates, the raiders, going head to head with a gang of rival players, the cutthroats. 
Victory goes to the team with the most loot at the end of the hunt. Can we make a team called the Cockfights? Yeah. Sure. Knowing how to sail with the wind is a pirate's most precious game. skill. Use the winds to increase your speed or to position yourself for tactical advantage in battle. To reap the most rewards, it is best to split up, some going inland, others keeping to the open sea. Each warship it has unique the strength. The frigate's hull is reinforced, I'm so its arsenal equipped with numerous culverin cannons. The brigantine is devastating up close, with a battering ram designed to break any resistance. The sloop of war kills from afar, with its crippling long-range mortars and precise long nine cannons. Everyone, everyone loves a good sloop. <laughs> good sloppy sloop. Don't let bloodlust cloud your purpose. You're here for the loot, and so are your rivals. Store the goods, then back to your station. The team that escapes with the most loot claims victory. Searching for more targets on the horizon, our sloop of war spots a rival pirate ship further inland. With its heavily reinforced hull, our frigate swoops in to save the day, bearing the brunt of the damage. Another day, another victim. They haven't shown any sporting. Mr. Mercy, vamos con todo. Yeah, Our gang of pirates is now taking aim at the frigate, and it will take team coordination to take her down. Also, by team, it's different. A lot of people in the uh, in the chat on World of Warships pirates. Yeah. So far, it's pretty out. They are killing! We can take their ship! With the enemy ship's broadside now vulnerable, our frigate rushes in to board her. Oh, there we go. Yeah, a finishing move of some kind. Fancy snort of some fish, piss! I always loved Assassin's Creed Black Flag because it seemed like Sid Meier's Pirates taken to the ultimate extreme. God, I love Sid Meier's Pirates. Except not enough dancing. Not enough dancing. Or, or big boozled governor's daughters. Pirate hunters have been sent in, signaling the end of the hunt. They target the pirates with the most stolen loot. Time to make our escape, Captain, or we are good for the news. Full tilt, Silbo, full tilt! The pirate hunter defenses are so strong that the only option is escape. The brigantine the like is sacrificing herself to buy time for the frigate Expensive. who carries the most loot. Like the black ones. The frigate now needs to make its escape through the reefs. Captain, that's back to the reefs! Successful pirates know Ubisoft when to run. Ubisoft typically has With one of the longest press conferences, and right? Wind yeah, last year backs. it went for two hours. Yeah, so these are... Yeah. But, they also, but they also show a lot of gameplay. Like, like here. Style. And this is the sixth game we've seen so far. So what I want to know about that uh, so far is if it's entirely... PvP or like how much just wandering around in the world you can do and do mm -hmm. PvE stuff, any sort of quests, uh, can you Thank go you into towns, I want to know all that I'd stuff. I'd like to invite you to play the loot hunt at the Ubisoft booth at E3.
and please register for our live phases Let's online. Sign up for beta. All right. Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention. The world of Skull and Bones is one that evolves. And now you don't know where. When you act. Because we hit it. It reacts. Can you show us more? Shanties. Shanties. That if I did not kiss the girls, my lips would grow a moldy. Way, hold away. Hot. Will hold away. <laughs> Kraken? Jones? What was that? Sea monster? I think it's Kraken. Nice. Okay, so there's Kraken! Something. So there's something for me. I like it. Hey, Mika. Yeah? What's Kraken? Oh. Fall 2018. <laughs> oh. Did it say fall 2018? Oh, there. did. What is Sea of Thieves projected now? Uh, know? Let me look that up head. really quick. Uh-oh. Is it time to just dance? Performance art. Early 2018. Early 2018, but it's just a window, not a specific date. Hey, Brian, you want to dance? You want to get up and want to dance? You hold on, you can do this. Just do a little just arm dance. I'm not appropriately like black lit. It's sub zero from Mortal Kombat in the offseason. That's <laughs> how he keeps in shape. So apparently they did the original Just Dance game on like a shoestring budget. Really? For like a couple thousand dollars. They didn't think it was going to be a success. So they didn't really invest in it. And then it went absolutely bonkers and became one of their biggest franchises. They're putting K pop in there? Couldn't actually find real Koreans. <laughs> right, yeah. but like they're putting bubble pop in. I love bubble pop. Hey, Korean. Oh. Yeah. It's alright, guys. Okay. I think you got one. And she's in the front. Oh, here come the awkward animals and again. And the... You know those girls were like, well, job's a job. Ain't no life like a butt pouncing a panda life. But I don't wanna dance with somebody. I just wanna dance with somebody. I just wanna dance with somebody. I just wanna dance with somebody. I love Power Girl. <laughs> does it look like a like a, like a casual Power Girl <laughs> dance? Like, right? Just let me know Not familiar, but I wish you were well. Did I? I hope we get a cameo by Left Car. <laughs> I think we just got Left Panda. You know, actually, after you left the Frag Dolls, uh, we did a number of events with them, um, like packs and things, and mm -hmm. it was the year that they introduced the Just Dance franchise. Hey everyone, yeah, I, Rexa, I dodged Just Dance. Just Dance. 2018 is you out this October on all they, consoles. They were out there Bye. dancing to promote the game, I think like six hours a day oh, at conventions. Yeah. Oh. All of those girls got in such tremendous shape over the Oof. course of a con season. It was incredible. You use it as a telephone. You use it as a camera. It's your music player, your flashlight, calculator, and GPS navigation device. Now but it's now, also your finally, mobile. The most high-tech company in the world has unlocked the mobile phone's true potential so that Self it can do app? what it was truly meant to do. We are playing Cowboys and Indians. Huh? Hey, new kid, we need you to come play with us. Put on some cowboy shit and meet us outside. And bring your phone. <laughs> the card oh, game. Playing cowboys and Indians, dickhole. Inuits are technically Native Americans. This new kid puts me to shame. <laughs> <laughs> what? So this will be today, right? 
I hope this is I hope this is a right now. I'm opening up the app store right now. <laughs> Destroyer! No, I'm just it's just 2017. <laughs> Everybody got ready. But wait, I'm in 2017. But is it 4K? That's what I want to know. I've been sitting on my phone the whole time. <laughs> it just said coming 2017. Son of a bitch. Oh. Space. I already like this. The final frontier. Oh, I made a Star Trek joke. Oh, you knew a Star Trek. <laughs> Atlas, jewel of the Pleiades. You have my attention. Nova Space boost. took us to the stars. No Space boost. <laughs> Each new world more incredible than the last. This is no, this is some man's sky. Hey, listen, I'm getting no man's sky vibe from it. Was right? For us. Look at those colors. Look at all the different planets. Look at the plants on the planets. If they show us dinosaurs. It consumes <laughs> everything in its path. They've never used Starlink before. Go show them what it can do. I'm sorry, was that a switch? Wait, what? what? What is happening? Okay, let's do this. Come on, come on. I got it. Chase, how's it going? Breaking atmosphere. Resisting ice barrage, linking fire loadout. What? Physical microtransactions? No. Yeah. Exactly what that is. We're up against impossible odds, but together we will adapt. God, it looks so much so like No Man's Sky, right? Let's say Destiny meets No Man's Sky. Meets Lego. Meets, yeah. See, now that's where they're going to get all your money. Yeah. Don't make me collect stuff. All right, for a game, I, I, just, I know a lot of people are into that. I'm not into that. I don't have I'm physical space that. for that. Don't want yeah, that. Amiibos I mean, already take up my space. That's what the Switch is all about, right? Collecting I'm, peripherals to I'm make Matt it Rose, useful. I'm producer collect. at Ubisoft Toronto. Like many of but you, gonna be huge I grew up kids. in the 80s, obsessed yeah. with sci-fi, animation, comics, and of course, all the really cool toys. At Ubisoft Toronto, we built a team with a dream of bringing those amazing childhood memories back to life for a new generation. Starlink Battle for Atlas allows you to take control of a team of star pilots in a massive, open, living star system, fighting to save Atlas from the Forgotten Legion. Build your custom starship, and then adapt to new challenges on the fly. Link extra armor and heavy weapons to take on a huge Legion Prime. Up next is a new Search answer. for ancient, oh, ancient oh, secrets <laughs> lost on the worlds of Atlas, or outrun outlaws through an asteroid field. Ooh, you're super Canadian. Freedom is at the core Toronto. of Starlink Battle okay. for Atlas. Collect your way with both physical Starship collectibles and digital versions available, and even take your game on the go using the power of Nintendo Switch. Except you got a big honking spaceship attached to your controller. <laughs> You're not gonna whip that out How on the Starlinkgame.com for more information part of a game. and stay tuned for I many mean, more surprises over the coming months. Thank you. Like, I went on vacation and it left did, a gun behind. It did say digital components as well. Yeah. Maybe like once it loads in, it's fine and you don't need it again. No, uh, what Maybe. if they're like sold in blind boxes too? Oh god. Oh god. <laughs> yeah. What, like real world loot boxes. I'm Rebecca Kutaz. Oh, we're going to know what happened to Steve. What happened to Steve? I'm the studio director at Ubisoft Dancy. It's a pleasure for me to be back on stage after our announcement at E3 last year. And we have had uh, since then a full year of support and continuous development of Steve. Since the very beginning of this project, we have been working with athletes and we have always been impressed by their passion and dedication. We learned how one champion spent 300 days a year on a trampoline to practice for that perfect landing. 
we learned how others make more than six million turns to practice for the 15 they have to race in competition. These athletes, they travel to the world to train with the best, to compete with the strongest, and to challenge themselves with the most experienced and skilled coaches. It's truly a level of passion and dedication that goes well beyond our everyday lives. And when you talk to the very best of these men and women, you realize that there is something they always have in back of their minds at all times. It's a dream that takes years of preparation for just one go at that unforgettable moment. This December, with our first steep expansion, this is the journey you will take. Enjoy. They're going to call it steeper, right? <laughs> To the steeper. Maybe it's got TDLC, maybe it's got steep to the child. You would wait and watch for far away. But you always knew that you'd be the one to work while they all play. You, you lay. Ash, as a snowboarder, does, does this excite you? You're a snowboarder? Yeah, not a good one, but yeah. <laughs> I, I like snowboarding games. Like the, I, it's been a while since I played a, one that I really like, like SSX Tricky or uh, SSX. one of my Tricky favorite awesome. ridiculous ones. If you want to get super crazy, the Dark Summit. This is Far Cry. I see wheat. Wheat. Wheat means Montana. It must Still, be. Still, Olympics license is a pretty good get for them. It's yeah. true. Yes. Yes. That looks like the kind of place you'd fly over. <clears throat> Take it easy. It's real Americans. Yeah. Well, not these people. <laughs> <laughs> such a hard time not seeing the reverend from Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt in a row with him. <laughs> More preachers need abs. More preachers should be John Hammond. Rendered in 4K. Yeah. Did you like Primal? I didn't play Primal. I, oh, I, I missed so it. Good. I, it's so good. I have so many games to catch up on. My name is Dan Primal Hay. rightly got I'm a lot of criticism for being a rooster. I'm the executive producer of Far Cry the Brand, reason. as well as the creative yeah, director cool, of Far Cry 5. He's all right. I'd like to introduce you to Hope County, Montana. Vast. Beautiful. Rugged. A place where like people don't even lock their front door anymore. <laughs> rugged dude. But that's how it used to be. Today, Hope County's been overrun by a fanatical cult. You find yourself trapped deep in cult territory, cut off from the rest of the world. They've closed the roads. There's no cell phone signal, no 911. People are fucking scared. Whoa. Thank you, dude. I had to say it. <laughs> So, the, so they're trying to address the, uh, the big And thing, just up ahead, the small town of Falls End has been completely overrun. You're in the U.S. You can so survive. Me about it. You and, and your saying, guns nah. for hire are going to need to save what? it. But to do that, well, you're going to need to raise some help. Oh, it's thank you for literally the have kids. Gameplay. Oh, you get dog. 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 Yeah, you get buddies. Joe the dog. <laughs> oh, I'm 
mean, in reality, that dog's going to eat. I'm going to name him Barksies. No, what are you doing? Dog's eating a dead human. I'm going to name him Xerxes. How dare you? No, you gotta, you got to customize it for dog. It'd be Barksies. That's what I just said. I mean, Barking Jones. Jones. I'm sorry, but I'm We're on the same wavelength. We got piggies. Town looks like a war zone. So the oh oh, so the outposts we it looks like are churches. That's cool. A lot of churches. For and that's the uh, radio towers. Got it. Job helping that guy. I'm in position. For only that will you walk in the light of our father and be delivered. Boom, boom, motherfuckers. Boom, 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 boom. Bang, bang, bang. All right, this is good. Boom, 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 boom. Behind you. Bang, 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 bang. Gonna need more help. I love the way you walk. And I love the way you walk. Thanks for hiring. And you walk right. that walk. And you talk that oh, oh, oh. You're so not so good. Oh, good boy. Oh, good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Who's your good boy? Who's your good doggo? Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> bang, 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 bang. They said it's co-op all the way through. Mm-hmm. That looked great. They've been I'm through ready. so many iterations of co-op, so it's good to see it go all the way. Is there a date on that? Or did I miss it? It's, I did not see I one. February 80, 2018, I want to okay. say. Oh, nice. I might be off. Double checking. February 27th, 2018. Someone says that Mika in Far Cry 5, that girl did kind of look like me. Ooh, what do we have here? Is this something new? Blade Runner? Red Steel 2? <laughs> Where's your master? I don't deal with domesticated. Hey, the fuck? I ain't got no master, but I do have your little toy. <laughs> Show me the idol. Show me the redeemer. Here you go, mate. Yo, 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 hand it over. I got a hot date who don't do late. <laughs> Monkey's got a date. What? What? I'm what? I'm confused because I was at first that getting Swiss fucking Beyond Good and Evil. Evil. Yeah. 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 But now I'm kind of getting like new IP bon vibes. I like sleeping dogs. <laughs> And now I don't know what vibes I'm getting. I definitely got to be up Panda. beyond good and evil for a second. New IP vibes. This is new IP vibes. In this fucking city. After that fucking bastard! Grab my chassis, Noxy! Easy peasy, bro! <laughs> Shit! Hang on! <laughs> this E3 is the late, like the, the ladies and bros. What is this? This is like the fourth game. 
fuck me. about bloody time. Mm. Let's see what we've got. Yeah. Moksha. Just as Yama described it. True freedom lies beyond. Too. It has told me nothing about what this is. It is. It's beyond good. It's and beyond evil. good and evil. It is. Yeah. Actually, once I saw the green actually, eyes, I saw the green eyes of the the lead lady. What yeah. did I say? I said they're not going to bring it, and then they're going to surprise you, and there it is. So this, what? this more than anything, this makes me yeah. excited that maybe we'll see Death Stranding at Sony wow. since they said yeah. they're not going to be beyond good and evil. Yeah, oh, Death Stranding may come. Yeah. Yeah. That is an Whoa. awesome. Whoa. Awesome. 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 The real. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah. When they got to the end, she had this computer, but then they showed her, Thank and you. she had green eyes like Jake. Thank you very right? much. The name of the character. Oh my god! Yes. I'm gonna be right back. I'm gonna get some pizza. <laughs> You're welcome. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Can you use it? Thank you. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Actually, first of all, I want oh to god, say so a big thank you to all the teams who worked very, very, very hard on Michelle, creating Michelle, all, Michelle, all, all this, cries. all this world. Uh, again, thank you to all these these teams behind us. I want also to say thank you to Eve with all my heart. <laughs> Thanks Eve for making this happen. This is, this is just amazing. Uh, and also a special thanks to the fans of Beyond Good and Evil for sticking with us for so long. Dude, you are so welcome. Not <laughs> bloody time. 15 years. <laughs> Almost. Thank so, you. welcome to System 3. Our story takes place before the birth of Jade in a multi ethnic, multicultural mm -hmm. human society in a distant solar system. It is a time when corporations create hybrids in their labs and enslave them to colonize the stars in order to compete for power and cosmic resources. With our crew of crazy and unforgettable characters, we fight in the name of freedom and the right to determine our own fate among the stars. And we will helm massive star-faring vessels through territories as spectacular as they are dangerous. We've been working very hard um, just on the technology during three years and today, we have a seamless online playground where we can travel across space at the speed of light. We can explore mysterious cities and discover unknown lands by ourselves or with friends. And we want you to participate in the making of this great adventure. Join our Space Monkey program. I <laughs> <laughs> love it. Yes. Today, and help us make beyond good and evil a world that will challenge us and bring us together for thousand adventure, thrills, and fun. And please, Eve, just join, join us. us. This is thank you, thank you. Yeah, congratulations, you guys. You know, Gabrielle and Michelle, you've done a fantastic job. 
It's amazing what uh, I've been, you have been able to achieve. And you and I, um, and all the teams, um, have the power of creating games that will amaze all the gamers. And I think video games can help us to grow and to get better. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Looks like we might have a wrap up, Christine. This definitely looks like the finale. So now I would like to thank everyone here in the room and those who are watching us from home. Thank you for listening today and thank you for playing our games. So to all the teams at Ubisoft, thank you for your incredible imagination and enthusiasm. All of us here, we wish you all a lot of fun playing games this year. So thank you very much and have a great E3. The release date for Young and no, 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 no further information. You could join their Space Monkeys program. <laughs> Yeah, that's so uh, no date, um, no gameplay or anything. That was just like a vision trailer, which and technically we got one of those like years and years and years and years and years ago. But maybe it was actually coming this time. I don't know. It's vision trailers mean nothing. Okay, wait, look, most importantly, it's, 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 it's not over. The show is not that's over. That's true, but that, that game actually kind of got canceled. So. 12 games in that wow. conference in about uh, 70 minutes or so. Wow. Lots of lots of gameplay. It was very much like, here's our game. Uh, they got to the gameplay in the first seven minutes, which I think is the best time to game so far. They also had I Miyamoto, so. so. Yeah, right, they had a great pretty... bookends on this one. They yeah. had mm -hmm. I think... Rabbid plus Mario, and then they had Beyond Good and Evil 2 at the end. Yeah. Last night when we were wrapping up the stream, I said I was really worried about the C3 because I felt like everything had been underwhelming and underperforming, not quite meeting the expectations I had for it. Ubisoft blew every expectation I had away. Same. Yep. Good Absolutely. Good, good job, Ubisoft. Totally was not looking forward to this conference yeah. at all. Didn't, was really not on my I was, radar. I was curious was to see Far Cry. Yeah. Yeah. Same. And I mean, the Mario Rabbids looking you know, like an XCOM style game. Gonna buy I mean, it. You know, you know, th that's the kind of game I love. I play the shit out of yeah. XCOM. <laughs> like that tactical turn based uh, combat what was stuff. Your, uh, your Game Boy Advance thing, Advance Wars? Advance Wars. I love yeah, Advance yeah, Wars. I play too. that all the time as well, yeah. Turn based yeah. combat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I will Far say, Cry I think maybe... So uh, no, go ahead. Well, the one thing I really kind of took away from that, because it did look like everything was, was in a pretty good state where they showed it, Ubisoft has had kind of a rough history with E3s and showing things that couldn't actually Very true. come Watch out. Too. I do feel like those that we saw gameplay from, though, were close enough to release where we might actually... They maybe they've learned from the, their past mistakes well, and actually locked in something they can deliver there. So uh, Yves Guimau actually said that um, this was following the whole Watch Dogs 2 downgrade thing, mm -hmm. uh, said that it actually, they learned a lot from it. Um, and <clears throat> instead of doing vertical slices the way they had done before, they're now making sure that like the gameplay can actually work on target, <laughs> like the PCs that right. they're, they're planning on the game running on. So that theoretically we're gonna get less of that. We'll almost always get some of it. Well, there are very few games that come out that look at that level. Uh, I mean, even Breath of the Wild too right. came came down, and it you know they. I get that it's because they're trying to sell you on an experience, and that when you're actually playing the game and you have the immersion, it you know doesn't matter as much like the cutting edgeness. But I do hope that they get a lot closer to delivering what they're showing. Also, it seemed like this was the conference of we listened and we're doing it. Yeah. Like, everybody Excellent. freaking out over Assassin's Creed Black Flag. They're like, okay, we'll give you literally just a pirate well, game, which is what you loved from that. Yeah, I mean, I think they totally, like you said, they listened to the feedback. That's mm -hmm. what everyone latched onto. And I think speaking to what Ashley said, talking about showing gameplay on target computers, th I think this means that Beyond Good and Evil 2 is still years away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, like yeah. you said, it was just a vision trailer. No gameplay, no release, nothing. Not, no even, not even a data. hint of gameplay. Yeah, yeah, I think we're going to be seeing it at the next couple of years. But we've waited yeah. how long for a sequel? Years. 15 years. It's 15 years, Let's really? just hope it's not a wow. Kingdom Hearts 3 syndrome where we're waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And, and just waiting. even seeing that, like, I wonder if there's any game that's gone as far between iterations, but more importantly, it seems to have changed as much. Yeah. As, I mean, I'm just remembering playing Beyond Good and Evil and loving it on the original Xbox when they announced at the uh, Microsoft press conference yesterday that they were going to have more backwards compatibility, I, that's the first game I always think of, is Beyond Good and Evil. Mm -hmm. It's, a, but it's the kind also, of game that I'd love to now. see more people play, for sure. It was I like, never played it. 
You should play it. It's it's really cool. It's very unique uh, as an experience. It's um, a camera based shooter essentially, <laughs> but it's a it's a puzzle game, and you don't like you don't have weapons. You're a journalist, mm -hmm. so you have a camera, and you're like getting evidence and building a story, and and that's sort of the direction that goes as opposed to straight In up combat. And then future uh, you, hybrid human world. Yeah. Okay. And you know you've you've got um you've got a a bunch of of like friends helping you out and. It's cool. It's I don't want to say too much about it, but it okay. is worth playing. Uh, I worry that it's a bit of a dated experience at this point. I agree with that. Um, and I don't. I haven't played it recently to be able to tell you for sure up. if that's the case, if or if the gameplay holds up. Uh, Do you think we'll see a remastered version to hype the sequel? I think Ooh, they already have that. That would be nice. Mm. I think they already have a remastered version of it. They have a version of it available uh, that you can already play on backwards compatibility through. Uh, I think through the 360, and then now that they have the Xbox One, I don't think you'd want to go back that far because they already have a newer, updated version of the original one. I'm going to double-check that, but I'm pretty sure that exists. Yeah, so uh, no Splinter Cell, no Prince of Persia. No. Nope, nope. Yeah, I'm going to read through the list here real fast of what we did. I, I took my notes this time. Nice. Yay, Gus. Nice work, Gus. Uh, we had uh, the Rat Mario Rabbids game. Got to play that. Assassin's Creed Origins. Got to play that. The Crew 2, uh, South Park, <laughs> The Fractured Butthole. Uh, Transference, Skull and Bones, Just Dance 2018, South Park Phone Destroyer, Starlink, Battle for Atlas, Steep DLC, Far Cry 5, Beyond Good and Evil 2. I mean, Damn. out of all that, I think uh, Just Dance 2018 game of show, right? Yeah. Clearly. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean... Yeah, in 2011, then they uh, released an HD version for the 360 and the PlayStation 3 for Beyond Good and Evil, because it was a standard def game. Mm. That's how long That's ago it was. Jeez. So yeah, most of them are games that I'm really uh, interested in. I think South Park Phone Destroyer might be one of the greatest names ever. <laughs> um, it'll be great if you score points by how far you can throw your phone up in the air. Oh my God! Then it's like a true phone destroyer. That just what was that? That was a, that, that was a, that send me to heaven. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Which was a game <laughs> that did the same thing that. that got removed by the Apple App Store, but you could still get it on Android for a while, I think. The tough part about this conference is that I, I just like feel like I just watched the la the next two years of my gameplay experience right here. Like yeah. I know I'm gonna play Skull and Bones. Mm -hmm. I know I'm gonna play that uh, uh, Rabbids and Mario game. Mm -hmm. I know that I'm gonna play Assassin's Creed Origin and mm -hmm. Far Cry Five, mm -hmm. and now I'm looking forward to Beyond Good and Evil too. Yeah. Well, and you like not just for, dance. That one's off my radar. Well, and for, <laughs> for the way you play a lot of games, they uh, like Ubisoft is very much like their their sort of open world formula is very much your type of game. Very much so, with collectibles and side missions and everything like that. Absolutely. But I was pleasantly surprised by Mario Rabbids when that when that art leaked, and there's the so that's that that cover photo, and it's got um, it's got Mario, but then it's got uh, Rabbids Peach taking the selfie, and everything just looks sort of. I was like, I was really, really concerned. Mm -hmm. Th this was the best sort of surprise in that I, it went from being like, oh great, let's suffer through this part of the conference to, holy shit, this game actually looks legitimately cool yeah. and interesting, and I. I want to see more of this. Well, I thought it was. I did not. I did not see that coming. I was not I, expecting. But Miyamoto's advice and the guidance that he gave was really interesting. I thought, where he said he wanted Ubisoft to make a Mario game that hasn't been made, as opposed to like just trying to retrofit, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, into a Nintendo style game. So, and it looked like it could have been a first-party Nintendo game. Um, you're right. There was some desaturation on some of the screens. I wonder if it's just I, a feed that, issue. that might I, also I be. Well, that was just our feed. Well, because we also saw the cameras. Um, there at the show, mm -hmm. changing filters. Sometimes, remember, weird. there was the yeah. one early on where it just like the filter like went like went on across the screen. It was during so. Assassin's Creed. Yeah. yeah, it was like somebody yeah. like put up a Snapchat filter and it just like yeah. kind of yeah. It's, yeah. Little, it's a look almost like a daylight effect. Also, but. when they went full screen with it versus mm -hmm. when you could see it behind the presenters, mm -hmm. uh, Mario looked way more saturated yeah. in yeah. those shots. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I'm sure it'll be. I'm sure the look and feel of Mario is something where Nintendo would step in. Also, we get to go on the floor and see it, so we'll be able to know uh, 20, if it looks like that. I think it was August 29th. Uh, I believe was the release mm -hmm. date. Not far away. I mean, not we're not going to have to wait too long to get it. Finally, a Switch game, a Switch exclusive game, a Switch exclusive game, and you, they have done a great job of sucking me in because I never thought I would see a turn-based shooter in the Mario universe right. on the Switch. So, all right, I'll give it a shot. I wonder 
if Mario is going to be able to use weapons. Or he's, he's got a gun. He, he, oh, he, he did have shot a gun. A gun yeah. multiple okay. times. He did. He used the buster. So they're letting Never Mario mind. break the child-friendly Nintendo but image. But it's like, it also, no, is, like, is, it, is, it happy like, race. is it shooting like bullet bullets? Or no, they're shooting, shooting like ridiculous? Mega Man blasters. This is the, there's a third crossover here, and it's actually Orgasmo. It's a reference that no one will get. I, I Orgasmo is amazing. What are you talking Those about? Those people out there. Matt Stone, Trey Parker. What about Parker? Matt Stone, Trey Parker. It was the oh, movie. they said yeah. they said Mario and Far Cry, and I'm like, I don't think no, we're gonna no. see that. Oh, the, another great crossover. The Far Cry <laughs> trailer I thought was really well executed, really well done. The humor in it, with the music and just all the transitions and dogs for hire, friends for hire. I want a dog that brings me guns. Right, yeah. that's so yeah. cool. Yeah, well, it's Far Cry. Machine guns. They've always made such uh, a name for themselves in the quality of the personality of your enemy. I mean, uh, Far Cry 3 especially, but then right. even Pagan Men was was interesting. Mm, like, yeah. you just right. wanted to understand why the enemies in those games are the way they are. Yeah, they, they haven't surpassed Voss, though. No, no, Voss was really kind of this where they... Like, Although the they first scene the in bar Far Cry pretty high pretty with Voss. Yes. Even though he was not even the final boss of the game. No. He, but he was compelling and, mm -hmm. like, interesting and crazy. Also, let's give credit to the Honey Badger. That's in Far Cry. As well. <laughs> that asshole. That's that's a great enemy as well. Just here, just grunting through the bushes at you. <laughs> For me, it was the the cassowary in Far Cry Three. Oh really? That's yeah. when I learned mm -hmm. how dangerous they actually were. <laughs> and honey badgers are in real life. Like we'll fuck you up. Mm -hmm. Honey badgers are relentless. Terrifying. Yeah, and hard to shoot too. So I, I know I, it, it's funny because uh, Far Cry at five iterations now is approaching where Assassin's Creed is, especially after it took the break. I know like Assassin's Creed Two, there was three iterations mm -hmm. of that but uh it's it's interesting because i'm i'm far more interested to play far cry 5 than i am to play assassin's creed origin i really am and it's like and i i've sustained that enthusiasm for the far cry franchise mm -hmm. this entire time like mm -hmm. you know even though people were upset about far cry 4 and far cry Pr primal people i loved about far cry 4 it was the exact same map oh it okay. was literally the same map and they just reskinned it for a you know primitive man adventure gotcha but i kind of like that because it was it was you know, i like the fact that it was like almost like i'm taking an adventure in the same land 10, what is this years man adventure you speak of <laughs> yeah but primal's great it's well really changing great. how you traverse the world really affected the map as well and that's kind of be well it's one of the things i did i like i liked less about primal i know you could still fast travel but it wasn't as fun to navigate the world just because you had to hoof it Mm -hmm. Everywhere you wanted to go, pretty much. And in four, the only uh, things you can fly in were those little cheap little copters, yeah, right? They now really they have drive to. Now they have biplanes. I mean, mm -hmm. do you need to take to the air in? And in yes. in, uh, in uh, this Far Cry Five trailer, they had fixed wing airplanes mm -hmm. like a Cessna. Mm -hmm. So that'll be interesting. I'm also really excited about the idea that it's it's co-op throughout. I mean, three yeah. had a custom co-op campaign. Four had a yes. a partial two-player co-op. So you mm -hmm. could do some side stuff but not main missions in co-op and four you can, like clear outposts with a buddy yeah basically yeah yeah but now you can go through the whole campaign do anything you want completely co-op which sounds pretty fun well i don't know about you guys but ubisoft that was the best uh presentation i've seen so far yeah i would have knocked they, it out of the they park had, um they had new ip they i think they came pretty successfully with um, with the ones that they had, like with existing IPs, both Far Cry and with Assassin's Creed, uh, there are uh, there are some franchises that I'm not as invested in uh, personally. Which, like, I'm not, I don't have a history with the crew to care about. Uh, a steep, probably not my kind of game. Uh, but they had a, like, there's the thing is they do have that variety. They've got racing. They have sports ish, uh, if that's extreme sports. Um, but then they also have their more traditional games. Did they roll those just, out? They're just dances. <laughs> they're just dances. I didn't, I didn't keep track of the order so much, but I'm just thinking of where it started, where it finished, and some of the things in the middle. Did they roll those out in order of release? Um, huh. I mean, you, yeah, I was trying to figure out why you would start with Rabbids, which is August is the earliest game No, because release. Fracture But Whole is October. Okay. And they but did that, that came... That came after, after crew, Rabbit. before transference, and transference is like a big ambiguity. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like a big question. I don't think they did it in order. I was trying to figure out why you'd end with Beyond Good and Evil. Because that was one that they were like, we're not bringing it. Well, they slipped it in there. It's a cool surprise, but it's also like way far way out, out there, and yeah. we don't even know what it is. It's, mm -hmm. I feel it's, like they just wanted to end on a mic drop. Like the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's, I, I, that, that's the raise our stock price and make it harder for Vivendi to. <laughs> <laughs> 
Is that a mic drop to you? That's like, hey, there's a game someday we'll work on. I, I think it is. I think the yeah. the way that they presented it and the way it looked was fucking amazing. Also, but, it's, a, it's a title that's been anticipated for a while. Mm -hmm. So and I think official confirmation. Yeah, and then also the fact that they were like, no, we're not bringing it to E3. Don't get your hopes up, everybody. And then they were just like, just kidding. But that they, was, they that was a anything. nice surprise. No, but just... They've you, been you're the right. Space Monkeys. They, they, they didn't lie because the game's not here. You're not going to be able to play it. They didn't actually show the game. So the game's not here, but the re-announcement was here. And exactly. it looks like they've re-examined it. Like, whatever they had before, they scrapped. Yeah. Because that is... Like, that game that we just saw a teaser for is not the game that we saw a teaser for however many years ago. Hmm. Uh, yeah, abs absolutely. So I think that, um, yeah, it's definitely a mic drop and something that, you know, is a, a big note to end a, a conference on. Yeah, their website, like I'm trying to load the Beyond Good and Evil website. Oh, it's down. It's down. Mo I mean, well, everyone well, is. Right. Most of the websites, apparently, that they, they, so for each one of the different games, they put up the link to their website, and apparently most of them aren't working. <laughs> Jeez. I don't know if that's because they're down because of sudden load or if, I don't know, just someone was, someone did their, their time, their, their time code, their like time zones wrong. And so they were not expecting oh. them to be live for another couple of hours or I, I don't know. Come on, but some, a lot of them are down. There's a web server somewhere with Beyond Good and Evil on it that's been doing nothing, like two blips a day for 17 years. <laughs> all of a sudden just lit up. It's still on a tape drive. I'm okay. trying to see what the email address for the Space Monkey program was, but I can't find oh. it because their website's down. I was going to remind <laughs> everyone what it is. Sorry, I tried. Yeah, now we do have, um, we're going to be pulling up um, a feed of Assassin's Creed gameplay that, believe it or not, is not just a, like, a screen. Oh, we're not doing goodness. over the shoulder we're not do, over we're the not, shoulder. It won't be over the shoulder. It'll actually Double be, over the shoulder. it'll actually be gameplay. We'll just, uh, we'll just, like, put it up casually in Let's here. It can be, okay. um, What are they doing? <laughs> it's teabagging it, dude. <laughs> Okay. So, he just got uh, teabagged into desynchronicity. Yeah, you know, <laughs> this is real gameplay. Yeah. That, 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 did, that would break uh, my synchronization you know, if suddenly I just started to get knocked over and teabagged. You'd be like, whoa. No, 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 whoa, whoa, this whoa, is a video okay. game. So um, the Sony conference starts at 6, right? That's in three and a half hours? So, yep. Yes. In a demo oh. Playthrough. Oh. 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 Yeah. You know, Japanese. You don't have to rub it in, Ash. In front of everybody. I've learned my lesson and I'll just keep moving on. The level 25 is too, too high. Let's just give uh, them a wide berth now. And, uh, so you're this will be interesting. The, the spread of the buildings horse? is so different from any of the mm -hmm. previous games. Well, unless you count maybe the fact that it was Assassin's Creed 3 was a lot of mm. open. Yeah. I, you know, I never played Assassin's Creed 3 all the way through. Uh, I, I, didn't I think either. a lot I started of people. It. It. I think that that all the way through is an important distinction. I think you're not the only one. A lot of people just tapped out of that one eventually. I that never was, made it to the whiny guy. That like was everyone the game, hates Connor. That was the game I tried to jump into the Assassin's Creed series with. Oh, oh yeah, no. choice. Yeah. Uh, then luckily Black Flag came next and saved me. No, I think uh, I think Flamingo. The thing is, two was such a like such a like Ezio was such a strong character mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Um, that it's really difficult then to to follow that with a character as lackluster as Connor. Mm. I hear he's just real whiny. He's very whiny. Yeah, mm. he just, he lacked, like, the thing about Ezio is, like, he just had, like, the, like, bravoso, and yeah. he just had, like, personality and charm. I mean, the first time you, like, meet him in the game in Assassin's Creed 2, he's, like, jumping out a girl's window. Seducing a woman. Yeah, yeah you know, he's, had. like... Oh, I loved that he's like, He's just, scene. like, uh -huh. you know, like, this young, hotshot punk. Uh, and then, and then over the series, has this wonderful arc, but is always very charismatic and has a big personality. Connor just sort of felt there. Uh-huh. Euphemeria. Also, his name was Connor. Like, that's not an Connor. assassiny name. It doesn't sound very assassiny. No. What about, like, John Connor from Terminator? See, John That's Connor, but if you have to name, do, though. like, full name, you oh. know? But just Connor. I'm Connor the Assassin. Connor's sure someone that went Connor. to a private school. <laughs> he's, he's driving. Wears a, a sweater over his yeah, shoulders. Yeah, I mean, he's got the, like, the thing that holds your sunglasses on. Oh. Yeah. Pastel polos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, look, there's a map. What, so what is it, what do you want out of this Assassin's Creed? What do you need them to have done in the break? No. Nope. Mika, go. Yay. Uh, I want... <laughs> yes, Mika. Thank you. I want more varied combat um, because I always felt that 
like the combat got a little bit stale sometimes in in the other Assassin's Creed, but I'm looking that he the, the dude has staffs and shields strapped to his back, so I okay, think why, staves. Thanks, staves. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think um, and we did see some shield usage yeah. uh, yesterday. I th so I think my prayers may have been answered for that one. I'm looking for some solid story. I'm I'm hoping some world that building. there's some definite world building that goes on. I like I said earlier, I heard them mention. Um, Egyptian gods, uh -huh. and we saw a giant snake. So I'm hoping that there's some sort of supernatural no, element. Oh or shit! Something. So that's Stealth really... Assassin 1990 in the chat says, "My name is Connor. I'm in a polo, brownie base." Oh my god! Uh... What about? So I have someone else here in YouTube chat. This is sarcastic. Said, "What about Connor McLeod, the Highlander?" Uh, well, see, he got in before it went. To... And also, McLeod is a cool last name. You said it bounces out. Yeah, it does. You've got Does to it, really have a last name to back it, it up. Yeah, do you think Connor during the American Revolution was wearing sunglasses and a pastel polo? Absolutely. Well, it depends on how many beavers he'd skinned. Okay. okay. Also, I think you he wore American flag pants. You know, <laughs> at his family's cookout. Oh, is this or is this look at the? Oh, I missed his face. I'm I'm very excited about all of this character design and costume design for. Uh, I I am always afraid of a prequel. Because I'm always worried that they're going to retcon in something that I can't reconcile with the rest of the series. Well, I that's agree. The, the challenge with prequels is always that... Oh, Gatorhead. You, it's like, you know where the series has to end up. Mm -hmm. Because you know what comes after. So you know that whatever the narrative is, it has to drive in a certain direction. Which is why you're like, some characters you know not to get invested in because you know they're going to die or whatever. In this case, everyone dies because that's what happens. Uh, well, that's the thing about Assassin's Creed is it's completely reverse of that. You know for a fact that your character didn't die because its genetic material got passed on to you in the future. Unless it already had a kid. Well, but, but then, then you but would then no longer have their the genetic, genetic information. Material. The genetic memory only goes not, as far as the you being it's conceived. It's not quantum, Gus. Okay. <laughs> okay. Just, I guess I, I, my knowledge for the animus is not as deep. I think they played around with that, actually, in uh, Assassin's Creed 2 at one point. I think you get at the moment when Ezio uh, gets it on with a lady, and then that's where your memory ends. Mm -hmm. And then you have some things later that you find out what happened to them. Interesting. I do hope that they keep the modern aspects <laughs> outside. What? Oh, what? I just had a horrible thought. Oh, was no. your horrible what was thought? It, what was it? Unless Ezio went back to make another genetic deposit. Oh, my God. Well, there you go. And there you have it. There you go. Right, hey, whatever, buddy. I, I warned you. So now that the, uh, the Assassin's Creed movie is... We don't speak of that. I watched it on a plane. Unfortunately. It's a, yeah. very, it's a very good plane movie. I well, watched you guys, it and drank. Is it a good no, plane I have movie not seen or is it. it just like... It's cute. They thought they were getting a sequel. Did they? Oh, bless. Well, they, they really set it up for one. Oh. 15 so, years. <laughs> there you go. They'll get a reboot. I'd watch it on a plane. Seems like a plane movie. It's, 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 a, it's okay to play. And not to spoil it for you, <laughs> which I don't think is possible, <laughs> but uh, it's uh, they went all in with the modern day animus part of the story mm. and less about the exciting assassins running across rooftops part. Gotcha. And, and they went all in with the smoke effects. We're pretty sure oh they God. went they went around all of where was the film? Where was it actually filmed? It's probably Vancouver, right? Everything films in Vancouver. All right. Well, they went all the way around Vancouver and they got every smoke machine. <laughs> they they could find within like a 500 mile radius Whoa. and every one of those smoke machines is is on full blast for the entire movie As assassin's creed was filmed in malta spain and pinewood studios in england okay so i stand corrected well if oh. england you just you got it already it's just foggy there all the time <laughs> did you see him just spear that guy that was pretty yeah. cool here, there's your, there's your varied there's combat. My, there's my varied combat. I also saw that they had a prompt that was something about using adrenaline, and it looked like he was using some cool fighting mechanics of, like, backup jumping. So it's hard to tell right now I'm because, I mean, he's got some kind of, like, van braces on, but since this is a prequel, will he have the wrist blade? I haven't the seen blade. the character use them. Uh -huh. I, I bet so you far. it's going to, again, that, that's the kind of thing where it's like, are they going to retcon something in? Where in this game is he going to get the wrist blade? Where in this game are the templates He's going to invent it and make it. <laughs> he's he's going to be sitting there and just like take a knife. He's, like, just right, he's like, like, I've got this spring and I've Look, got this knife. You guys, climbing. you guys. Yeah. He's, cl he's just got, climbing got, up a mountain. You got, got Breath of the Wild in my on. Assassin's so, Creed. What I'm liking seeing is that in Assassin's Creed before you've had to see footholds, he's just climbing a mountain. So is this Breath of the Wild? Well, he hasn't climbed, he hasn't. 
Has he climbed something? He's just running up the... No, he climbed, yeah. he climbed, he climbed. Okay. And it, I didn't see footholds like you have to see in other Assassin's Creed games with buildings. So is this Breath of the Wild link climbing? Is it so, climb whatever um, the fuck you want? Oh, Alec so, George in the chat says like. he used the blade yesterday. Okay. <laughs> They've shown the wrist blades. So okay, we'll get blades it at some point. This, in this is game. definitely climb wherever you feel. And I'm liking that. I mean, the buildings mostly work that way. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Is he going to leap of faith into a hay bale? Or are we going to have a... We're gonna have Leave of Faith. Is he have gonna they, synchronize? He's gonna synchronize. Have, they, so he's gonna synchronize. have they invented hay bales yet? Is it, okay, but I want to see it. It's gonna be so pretty. If you can launch a hawk and see through its eyes, why do you need to climb up high anymore? Because assassins. Okay. <laughs> uh, also for the view. I mean, the view's spectacular, but you'd think the hawk could just look up. Nah, nah. They can't do that now. No. no. Their neck doesn't work can that only way. Do so they're, much. they're like dogs. Yeah. Okay, can you flash Y, please? Um, I so, want to see uh, laugh for that one. <laughs> as well, um, uh, Lord Faction says, plus the leveling system is new and interesting. Are they not going to oh. synchronize? Yeah, seriously, like, they're just talking. Well, they're talking over it. They're, they're having a nice little like yak yak. Give them a second. It's very pretty what they're doing. Oh, I mean, that's my goodness. gorgeous. Is, is that Anthony Carboni in our chat? Is it? I think it is. Um, Anthony says uh, he doesn't know how to do it yet. He just lands in a pile of broken glass and <laughs> <laughs> So. Yeah, look down, guy. Let's see what you're going to splat in. There we go. Hey! Oh, nice. that's just beautiful. Ha, ha, ma, 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 ma. I can't wait to hear the music so in this game. So many trees. You never think of Egypt as that green. Hmm. I blame all the mummy movies. I wonder if it gets seasonal. Especially There's, um, the new one. Like, I wonder if you're in the area where they have like the, like, the floodplains mm -hmm. that will flood once a year, and that's... Yeah. I mean, their irrigation. It, it had to be a fertile enough right. area to support human life, so it's it's mm -hmm. it can't all be sand. I think the Nile Delta is supposed to be very fertile. Yeah. Oh, oh boy. Oh, palm oh, fronds. Palm fronds. Conveniently placed palm fronds. Well, the, he keeps them piled up there. This is making me very excited about my yeah, adventure. See, what you don't see about these games is all of the upkeep that he has to do, like when he has to run mm -hmm. around putting fresh Set palm fronds down <laughs> because all the old ones have dried out or, or been stolen. Before he jumps into it, he's got to, like, poke around and make sure there's not a snake in it. That's important. That's true. There's a snake in my pile. <laughs> Uh-oh. All right. I'm, that's Fool also an option. Psych Get wrecked, suckers. scrubs. <laughs> all right. You well, probably not the best idea, but okay. Oh. That's a big old Nice. Bow. So the weapon switching seems easy and swift. There's no menu or anything. Well, I mean, if he's, uh, I assume range is just on a different. Right, maybe it is. Very like Breath of the Wild. It's a nice I'm sorry, are those four arrows at once that he is holding in his hand? Uh, that seems like a lot of effort. That uh, sounds event, hor not event horizon, uh, horizon zero, Donnie. I also like that cool. no one gave a fuck that that dude just murdered two dudes and just left him on the steps. Ah, uh, it's in ancient Egypt. It's Egypt. Have, different. It's a brutal, have brutal they, life. They have live. they invented like law? I don't think they have. I mean, they have to have invented law by now. Uh, I, I think yeah, it, no, Hammurabi I mean, hasn't been invented civil, yet. Like any sort of civilized area like this is going to have law, but eh. you know, maybe they didn't like maybe write it down. Law. I just like a civilization where you can have a nipple out at all times. Did he also pull the arrows out? Free the nipple, Ryan. I think I think you can reuse ammo. It looked like he. Well, you don't want to go about m making arrows all the time if you can avoid it. I, I wonder if you can crafting. craft arrows in this game. And um, Uzushio uh, Hashashin says uh, Templars seem to be Roman troops. Oh, the Romans in Egypt. Okay, right. that's interesting. That makes sense. Sort of dates the game as well. I mean, yeah, wasn't well, there we know it's um, we know it's uh, what is it fifth. Fifth Dynasty Egypt. Um, remember where that leak came out a while oh, ago? Kill was, the just cat. That, was just that one screenshot. Oh, what? Kitty. Cat. Cat. Kitty. Look, look, no kitties. Egyptians cat. worship cat. No, we need to have something cat. to put our marbles in. No. What? What? <laughs> I don't know. He always needs more pouches. Don't you tell me that cat skin isn't going to be part of this game. You know, I'll because Egyptians right worship cats. Well, this is a long time ago. Maybe they hadn't caught on to that yet. What? Besides, Maybe this, they this were cat, still tasty no, this, snacks. This cat's nice, though. Look, it's doing that thing where it runs through your legs. Yeah, it's like, hey, make me into a pouch. Going, going would rugs, you stop trying rugs. to kill uh, animals? A dog would be bringing you guns right now. Yeah, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's gone placid. So the, um, it's accepted its fate. The, the screenshot that came out, uh, that sort of like off, it was like an off-screen shot. Also, that's a uh, white cat. It's going to get skin cancer immediately. Oh. 
before, like it was way before E3, um, and it was basically your your dude in a in a boat, mm -hmm. uh, and then there were some yeah. directives on a on a screen, and one of them seemed to indicate the queen that was like she was a queen during the fifth dynasty of Egypt. So that's like sort of Nefertiti? where they like hit the hit I the, just, the that's placement. That's the only one I could name. I mean, it's crazy to think you know we're talking now about what the setting for this game is potentially. The ancient Egyptian empire spanned such a long period of time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, ancient Egypt, from what I'm looking at here, um, you know, there's different kingdoms, there's different periods within it, but ancient Egypt is classified between 3100 BC and 332 BC. It's like almost 2800 years of Thanks time. To build a pyramid, it's more than you know? zero BC to now. Wasn't That's, there? They were willing to invest a lot of lifetimes in things. Wasn't there a leak saying that they were going to have multiple stories? Spanned or multiple characters oh, I don't or know. something like That'd maybe we're gonna it's gonna span multiple dynasties to try yeah, and there, cover there was it. talk of multiple time periods but you, you have I we're not seeing that at all here no. mm -hmm. so that might be out maybe that is if you don't have a future like if we never return to modern day then doing that makes a lot less sense because right. then you would literally in the space of the story you'd have to cover it with like a cutscene of like I had a kid. And then I raised the kid for a while. And now the kid is ready to become an assassin, too. Maybe you can play that in an add-on mobile game. There you go. You play raise Feed the kid. the baby. Yeah. Train the baby. Throw it off a ledge and so it learns. Yeah, that's it. Teach it to synchronize. Just boom. <laughs> Just throw it off a ledge. Yeah. I, I, would, I would say shove, right? Oh. So throw. Oh. I mean, get it. you got to get it clear of the cliff. Yeah. You just roll it over the edge, it's going to hit everything on the way down. Babies naturally fly. What do you think the little it's baby true. legs are for? Just mew. Yeah. Mew, mew. But uh, yeah, no, if you go to the future, you're just like, all right, fast forward me to the after I did all that child raising stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so Otaku Warrior um, has a correction for me, um, saying it was Watch Dogs 1 suffering the extreme downgrade, not 2. Right. So, which, yes, I misspoke. It was 1. Yes. I never forget. Never no one forget. ever did, no. Yeah. That's that's an example of um, one of the games that came came out with like a vision trailer, and then we saw it at a couple of E3s, and then really got down. I mean, that's probably the ultimate well, but example the, of that. The weird thing about that was those settings were still in the code; they just disabled them. Yeah, well, they just couldn't get it work performance-wise. I mean, I'd rather you deliver me a game that works at a decent frame rate than but, has extra. But then sparkle. leave them like leave them in there for people who do have the high-end rigs. Right? Yeah. No, I mean, I, I don't disagree with you. I'm, I'm not going to defend that position. Yeah, it's, uh, I think everyone's learned a lot since, uh, since that fiasco. Yeah. Um, and to give you guys a little bit of an update, the, uh, the Sony press conference is still coming up. That's going to start at uh, 6 p.m. Pacific, so that's in a couple of hours. We're hanging out in the meantime. We're going to spin up the, the community battleground Are server we? again. Yeah. Yeah, Are you we? Wanna, you want, yeah, you want to get, get it? it? Uh, we'll spin up the community battleground server again and get that going. And uh, we we can do some more quiplash. That was a lot of fun yesterday, right? Sure, yeah. um, maybe we'll be better at overcooked this time. Anything, Unlikely. Anything could happen. Uh, but we'll get that going uh, just in the interim. And uh, PlayStation is 6 p.m. We'll start sort of. Uh, we'll we'll focus in on uh, that maybe a half hour beforehand and start talking about what we hope to see and uh, what we think we'll see. Uh, and then we'll all watch that together. And uh, then we are halfway through E3 after today, and then the actual show starts. Yay! Um, so, uh, so stay tuned if you're, if you're with us, or if you have to run, you know, uh, you know when to be back by. But this is going to be a lot of fun, I think. Um, I like seeing the gameplay that we are seeing from Assassin's Creed. I, I'm happy that they're showing that stuff. It's weird to me, like it's, because the, like they've showed the trailer, all that stuff is very, very, very polished. Then you see the gameplay and you're like, oh, yes, of course, it's Assassin's Creed game. It's actually not... Still got a ways to, you know... Yeah, it's not, like, revolutionary in that we've never seen this game before. It is an Assassin's Creed game set in Egypt uh, that looks a bit prettier. Very pretty. I mean, it's got green in it. Which that's, is that's it does. different over, from the past few games. That's true. It's, yeah. it's pretty much the only overriding color we've seen so far is brown and green. Yeah. It has reds and oranges in it this time. A little bit. Yeah, there was some reds. Even the cat was white. White is brighter than gray. Well, it seems like it would have gotten dirty, you'd think, but... 
It's a magical well, it's cat, a, Ryan. It's a holy it's cat. Maybe it full gets washed. Yeah, maybe every time they see him, they're like, "Oh, you're dirty," but we worship you, holy cat. I'm pretty sure they need their water for other things. You know, Ryan, is being is it, is, is being married to a vet make you cynical about animals? <laughs> maybe just realistic. Or or realistic. That's also totally lame. Maybe they could say I have a white cat that's a total asshole. Oh, oh that's that the, okay, sense. yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll, right. that'll do it right that'll, there. That'll, that'll, that'll all make you need. want to turn a cat into a pouch. Do you think <laughs> they may retcon the t Assassin's Creed spoiler alert aliens thing for mystical stuff? Well, I mean, you don't know at one point. In fact, if you think about it in the timeline of it, I don't know that the people in the... Uh, timelines that they are accessing ever right. understood that it was aliens right. you kind of put the pieces together later in the future right but to them it could have just been magic right that's what i'm saying like maybe that i just i'm really hoping that because it seems like they whenever i talk to people who worked on assassin's creed or had something to do with assassin's creed they always put emphasis on how they studied the culture studied the time period studied where they had to go and be to make everything accurate. So I'm hoping that they do. Oh, yeah, I do. Um, I'll, I'll move out. I want to speak to that, actually. What? So, yep. You know, what you're talking about, like the research to make things, you know, culturally accurate. Yeah. I attended uh, a DICE presentation that Ubisoft put on, I think, two years ago, mm -hmm. where they talked about the internal tools that helped them do that, where they have, you know, basically like big almanacs and compendiums that they create internally right. that outline all of that and have, you know, photos and reference so that they can make sure when they make a game, that it looks historically accurate mm -hmm. and is correct factually. Which is so cool. Which is amazing to spend those resources to ensure that level of accuracy. Right, so, exactly. Yeah, so I'm, I'm hoping that with knowing that Ubisoft and Assassin's Creed devs do that, that there will be the uh, mystical, spiritual side of ancient Egypt playing into the origins of, you know, all the assassiny goodness. Sure, I mean, it's, maybe I'm misremembering it, but in the, in the older timelines. Mm -hmm. um, you, back uh, when it was all about the Apple of Eden. It was all about the Apple of Eden, and only once in a great while did someone ever actually use the thing. Right. Like, you had it as a boss fight in Assassin's Creed 1. Right. And then after that, everybody's just looking for it. Right. And rarely do you ever actually have to yeah. interact with it exercising its power. Mm -hmm. So it might be kind of strange if they really stretched it in this one and started, I mean, uh, illusion was something that it could, was capable of doing. I feel like maybe, you know how you, sometimes when you get prequels, it's always because like you can, you have the mystical thing that's used often, but then in modern times it's disappeared or it's been mm -hmm. hidden. So maybe this is the opportunity that they can take to use a bunch of mystical items, use it a lot mm, before it get gets crazy taken away, it. before it gets hidden, before it's the sought after item. It does, something does have to typically happen to in, cause the legends to exist. Exactly. It's like, why were people looking for this thing? Why was it so sought after and feared? Right. So no, that could make a lot of sense. If it's, this was the heyday of its usage, mm -hmm. the height of its power, mm -hmm. the, the dangerous days of the Apple of Eden. Exactly. It's bad boy youth. Maybe someone will bring out a mystical staff that we don't know about. Yes, you can get Loki it up. I just, listen, whenever we get into ancient Egypt, I always just want to see, like, some god or goddess come down from above in, like, flowing gold and white robes with a staff with a snake on it or an Anubis or something. And you know, uh, yeah, there's a lot of things you could tie into there. They do, I mean, um, but... That being said, the poor history of Egypt has been warped to those ends so frequently yeah. because they're, I mean, look, Anne Rice did it with, uh, with her <laughs> series of books. It's like there's, there's such an interesting con connection between all of the god figures in that. Mm -hmm. And they were also uh, much more humanly motivated than a lot of uh, more contemporary religious figures. Right. Uh, that in their interrelations and they're like, cutting penises off each other and then burning them up and yep. <laughs> I, I need to learn a lot more about this I'm, I'm realizing ancient you know, Egypt is is a wild it was a raw us. place <laughs> and then one's a sun god and then yeah but then the pharaohs the sun, it's a whole thing but they, they fought over job titles a lot in yeah. ancient Egypt uh but yeah so it's easy to twist to a purpose in mm -hmm. a story mm -hmm. I, and I think it's also one of those things where the statute of limitations on people really getting upset about that <laughs> 
is kind of expired. They're like, yeah. no one's still like a devout follower of Osiris. And um, like, I'm a devout follower me? of Ra. How excuse fucking dare me? you? The sun is my place to talk about. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah. You can go ham with all of your birds and dogs. and. That'd be like someone getting bent out of shape about Zeus getting bad press at this point. Um, How dare you insinuate that Zeus sticks his dick in everything? He sticks his dick in most things. I'm I, personally offended. I mean, it's... He, he really did pretty much put... He, didn't he turn into a goose one time and then fuck a lady? He fucked everything. And as turned everything. into every Yeah, he yeah. fucked everything as everything. He got the full experience. You know what? Props to Zeus. No, no props to Zeus. Oh. Bad Zeus. Well, he's talking about the ladies who are boning geese. That's... Yeah. Let, who was boning geese out there? What Grecians were like, oh, yeah, that hot goose. Look, they all knew it was a god. But, but did they? Look, everything back that, then could have been that a god. they told their friends later? Like, oh, everything no, I knew he was a god. Everything could have been a god? Yeah. Anything that acted weird, probably a god. Better have sex with it. Don't want to lose it. <laughs> Just in case, better bone it. This goose is getting real fresh from yeah. me. I think maybe it might have god in it. Is it, is it goose in you? Oh. Oh. I'll be, I'll be here all week, folks. Well, now we know what uh, Ryan thinks whenever he sees a goose acting strange. I mean. Better fuck it. Better safe than... Cursed. <laughs>